Boswell Media Sports. Good evening and welcome in to Boswell Media Sports coverage of Kosciuszko Lady Whippet Softball. Finally, we are finally on the air at 8.30 here after a long day spent at the ballpark for a state championship. This is game one from the campus of Southern Miss. Uh, Kosciuszko uh, fans know this place very well. They've been here before. They've been here a few times and uh, have had uh, pretty good results here uh, the past few times they have traveled. they got a tough task in front of them tonight, though, as uh, they face off against Summerall, the Lady Bobcats, which is just right up the road, about 20 minutes. So this is basically a home game for Summerall. They have... Uh, about, I'd say, two-thirds of the bleachers uh, taken up here. Of course, Kosciuszko has a great crowd, as they always do. But when it's uh, 20 minutes up the road, you can imagine that they uh, – lots of blue and yellow here in the uh, in the stands. So we are – I'm just going to go here from uh, what we have. As I said, we just jumped on the air very quickly because they didn't give us a lot of time to uh, set up uh, here in the uh, in the press box before they started game or started get ready for the uh, the game. As Coach Tony Terry is at a home plate with the head coach of the uh, Summerall Lady Bobcats, that'll be Dodie Robertson. Uh, luckily, they they do have some less ceremonial stuff that they do before game one, so. Uh, that'll give us a little bit more time to kind of get into our uh, broadcast here and do what we want to do. But uh, we appreciate you for being on, uh, whether you're listening on Breezy 101, uh, breezynews.com, the Breezy 101 app, or if you found the uh, audio-only feed there at uh, YouTube. Because uh, it's audio only, because we're not allowed to uh, video broadcast. I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, a lot of red tape and everything. But, hey, we're here and we're ready to go. You're listening to the Premier Medical pregame show. And right now we'll take a look at the starting lineups for uh, the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets. They are the visitors in tonight's ball game, And a uh, pretty similar lineup to what the Whippets put out on the field on the in game two against West Lauderdale. Starting uh, the lineup, batting first, playing shortstop, McKinley Dickerson. Mary Kimball Price bats second, plays third. Anna Grace Whitehead, she bats third. She'll be pitching. Campbell Blaine, the dandy dozen, bats fourth, plays center field. Another dandy dozen. Gracie Williams, she'll bat fifth, plays second. Uh, Alexandra West will bat sixth and play uh, catcher. Macy Coleman will bat seventh. She's in left field. Lizzie K. Jones bats uh, eighth. She's in right field. Anna Grace Mansell is your designated player. And in the field you'll have is your flex player, Katie Morgan Rutherford, playing at first base. It goes Dickerson, Price, Whitehead, Blaine, Williams, West, Coleman, Jones, Mansell. As the Kosciuszko uh, uh, Lady Whippet seniors are out on the field right now, and they are accepting the award for the North State Championship. They award both teams uh, their uh, respective North and South Half Championship trophies before the game. So they're there. Uh, they're getting the uh, the uh, picture taken, and I believe we're going to have a uh, – um, an award ceremony they to give like MVPs for for everything. So we'll have to get who who that is, a scholar athlete or something along those lines. But we'll take a look at the starters for the Bobcats from Summerall. Anna Grace shows, or excuse me, Shows. She bats first, plays right field. Shaley Ingram, she'll bat. Uh, second, play left field. Ella Robertson, that's uh, Coach Robertson's daughter. She'll bat third, play shortstop. Brandy Bond, she's the third baseman batting fourth. Ashlyn Burkhalter is in the circle. And it's Anna Grace Mansell that gets the scholar athlete for Kosciuszko. So she is uh, uh, walking out to accept that award from the MHSAA. Uh, we'll continue with the... Lineups here, Ashton Stringfellow, she'll bat uh, sixth, play second base. Brett Lofton bats seventh, is the catcher. Summer Powers is the designated player batting eighth. Lundy Robertson will bat ninth and play center field. And your flex player, Olivia Heron, is in the field at first base. The Lady Bobcats of Summerall come in with a record of 27-7. and seven. They were 9-1. and one. They're the champions of Region 7, how they got here. Uh, 
uh, three-game series in round two against Green County, a uh, two-game sweep of Newton County, and then three games against last year's uh, runners-up, North Pike, uh, three-game series there. Uh, this is, from what I could find, the first time Kosciuszko and Summerall have squared off in softball. And uh, so uh, Coach Robertson has uh, put together a great program down in uh, Lamar County. It's northern Lamar County. Uh, that's where Summerall is, as I said, only about 20 minutes up the road uh, from us. So they are, uh, there are plenty of uh, Bobcat fans in attendance. Uh, Kosciuszko's record, 28-3-1 on the season, and those uh, three losses to East Webster and Neshoba Central, both are who are playing here this weekend. Neshoba won the previous game before ours, 7 to nothing. Also a loss to Germantown. The only tie was to Harrison Central, and the only common opponent between the teams, Lake. Kosciuszko played Lake three times in the regular season, a 12-4 win on February 28th, a 5-2 win on March 21st, and a 9-3 win on March 26th. Summerall played Lake on March 12th, and they lost that game 11 to 10. So that's a kind of a look at the uh, what we can give you from stats. We don't have their stats were not updated uh, for the playoffs. Their stats quit about. Uh, on the online where they keep the stats, they quit updating them about the regular end of the regular season. So we have no uh, pitch. We have some pitching stats and uh, some regular season stats, but for uh, summer all, n- not a lot when it comes to uh, pitching and, and other things. We do have a scouting report. I appreciate uh, my pal Josh West, uh, who is uh, doing some uh, also some broadcasting here this evening. Uh, he talked to Coach Robertson. And uh, me and him exchanged notes. I gave him Kosciuszko's uh, sort of scouting report, and he gave me the scouting report that he got from uh, Coach Robertson. So uh, the uh, starters for Summerall being called out as they're running out to their pace, bases. Uh, spots, that's going to put a wrap on the premier medical pregame show. We'll step aside for a few minutes for the national anthem. You're listening to Kosciuszko Lady Whippet Softball on Boswell Media Sports. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, Grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We know life has been busy and routines have changed for many. However, we do not want you to neglect your oral health. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. That puts a wrap on the Premier Medical pregame show and uh, just a few minutes away from first pitch here from the campus of Southern Miss. Uh, we forgot to tell you that those starting lineups when we announced them are brought to you by 
Holmes Community College. When you look at your Renaissance Insurance uh, weather report uh, here uh, in uh, Hattiesburg, as you can uh, imagine, not as hot with the, the sun going down 77 degrees right now. Uh, not much wind at all. And the field is in great shape uh, for, for this to be the fourth game of the afternoon. So uh, that puts a wrap on that. And as I said, they were rushing and we were rushing, trying to get in here and get our stuff in. And the previous broadcast team took, you know, uh, had to get out. We had to come in. So it's uh, one of those, hey, we're all going to play catch up here. But we are here going to have some softball for you as the Lady Whippets will send uh, uh, the top three in the order up to the plate. McKinley Dickerson to lead things off. I'm trying to get you some extra sound if we can get one of these windows open. Uh, first pitch. Swinging sh is hit foul. 840. That's our first pitch. McKinley Dickerson in the postseason is uh, hitting it at 285. She leads the team in runs scored. Oh, first pitch. I'll give you some. I don't think I don't think we have many stats on Burkhalter when it comes to pitching. And there's a curveball. It comes back across for a strike two. Scouting report on Summerall. Like to, they hit it a lot. They like to bunt, play a little small ball. So they'll bunt it and try to steal some bases. And pitchers rely on curve balls. And that one's off the plate for ball one. First innings for Whippet Softball presented by Atala County Bank. Oh, Dickerson of the one two count. And he, she fouls that one off. Yeah, the only pitcher we have stats for for the Bobcats is Brandy Bond. Regular season, she went 11 and 1, 1 1.16 earned run average, 72 strikeouts, but she's not in the circle. She's at third base right now. A pop up, that one's going to get out of play and be caught by. I believe that's former Whippet Lofton Price that made the catch there. Whippet fans know that. He one-hands it out of the air in the foul ball but back in the stands. Lofton Price showing you his, his Whippet skills. Uh, his sister plays ball for the Whippets. Mary Kimball Price, she's at third base here this evening. Still a 1-2 count to McKinley Dickerson just underway here from Southern Myth. That one comes in and it hits her. No, uh, she was hit by pitch, what, three times in the game against the game two of West Lauderdale? Oh, I hope they got that girl some ice. <laughs> but that'll bring up Mary Kimball Price. Price here in the postseason, a 333 hitter, down just a little bit from her 558 that she averaged throughout the season. Seven for 21 in the postseason. That one's hit into right field, and Shouls. Only has to take about two steps back and catches that one for out number one. So that'll bring up Anna Grace Whitehead. Whitehead, the sophomore, batting 470, which is slightly above her average. She batted 420 in the regular season, 470 here in the postseason. Eight for 17 with a couple of home runs, a couple of doubles, and seven runs driven in. She shows bunt. And uh, Dickerson... Gets down to second base. There was a throw, but well off the bag. So the stolen base for Dickerson. Pitch goes down as a strike to Whitehead as she left the bat out there. A one down in the inning, no score. Top of the first. We're finally underway. I should have worn my pajamas to the ballpark. We're going to be out here late, late, late. That one bounces to the plate from Burke Halter. Kind of even at one. This is Summerall's first appearance in the state championship uh, game or state championship series. I think they, they made it to the, I believe it was the third round last year before being eliminated. Uh, pop up right field. Shouls coming in and hauls it in. Ball really hung up there. Second baseman Stringfellow uh, went out 
beyond the gra- beyond the dirt and thought she was going to have a play for it, but Shouse called her off, and that'll send Campbell Blaine to the plate. Blaine, the lefty. Dandy Dozen. The SIP wanted to wish Campbell good luck here in the state championship. If you've been to the SIP, you, Campbell might have uh, made you a coffee or a tea or something of the sort. She looks at ball one. Campbell, 500 hitter in the postseason, up from 380 in the regular season. Just got a runner in scoring position. And that one's hit into the gap in left field, and that's going to score a run. Blaine's legging it for second. She's going to leg it out for third. Throw is cut off, and it's a triple for Campbell Blaine. Hey, the ship likes that one. One to nothing, Kosciuszko. Yeah, Blaine was thinking three bases all the way right there. You know, she's the fastest on the team, and she just split the defense out there. Ingram is playing closer to the line and left, and Robertson playing straight up center. So there's a whole lot of room out there for that ball to roll to the fence, which it did. And that's one to nothing. Whippets in the lead. Gracie Williams, another dandy dozen coming to the plate. Pitches a, like a change up called strike one. Hey, last time Gracie Williams was batting in this ballpark, she was hitting the game-winning run in for game three of the uh, state championship last year. Gracie Williams also going to play in the MAC All-Star game. That pitch on the corner. Williams didn't like the call. It was a fastball. But Williams at the plate with Campbell Blaine down at third. 0-2 pitch from Burkhalter. Swing and strike three. Got her to chase the rise ball. But the Whippets get one run on one hit. No error and one left on base. Whippets lead it one to nothing. Back in 60 seconds with more softball on Boswell Media Sports. Atala County Bank is now open at the corner of Highway 12 and 35. Commercial consumer loans, checking savings online, and mobile banking friendly financial services that truly fit your needs. With local calls and local decisions, it's what we do. Call 662-290-6963. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, now open in Kosciuszko. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. Whippets plate one in the first inning, and uh, they lead it one to nothing. Now it'll be Summerall's time at the bat. They'll face off against Anna Grace Whitehead. Whitehead has pitched all but one inning of the Whippets postseason. Let's see, I have her 43 innings pitch, giving up 31 hits, 17 runs, and 34 strikeouts. The only other Whippet pitcher to get any playing time was Gracie Williams, who pitched the final inning in game one against Inawamba. Anna Grace Shouse steps in to lead things off for some raw. She's a lefty, and we have her batting at 490 with a couple of home runs. She is uh, going to be playing up close to central Mississippi when she uh, graduates this week. She will be playing for East Central Community College. First pitch high outside, ball one. A couple of these Summerall Lady Bobcats have signed with community colleges. Fastball outside corner, strike one from Whitehead. Go around the defense for the whippets. You got Whitehead in the circle, and you got West behind the plate at the corners. Price at third, Rutherford at first, up the middle. Dickerson at shortstop, and Williams at second. Swinging strike two. Big cut there by Shouse. 
Comes up empty. Around the outfield, left field, Macy Coleman. Uh, center field, Campbell Blaine. Right field, Lizzie Kate Jones. A one two count to the lefty, Anna Grace Shows. Spelled like shows. We got the correct pronunciation prior to the ball game, prior to the broadcast. Pop up, left field. Macy Coleman is camps out under and makes the catch. Yeah, we spoke with uh, one of the Pine Belt Sports. There's a you know a publication down here that covers a, a lot of the teams here in the Pine Belt, as you might guess. And uh, we were able to get some uh, pronunciations from uh, a nice couple of folks that are working with that publication. So we appreciate their help. Uh, coming to the plate will be Shaley Ingram. Ingram. So uh, if I can find her on my chart here. She looks at a fastball that's high out of the zone for ball one. Ingram bats 400 in the regular season. Uh, she had a big uh, end of the year, came on strong in the postseason. We do know that. Whitehead winds and delivers. Got her to chase the rise ball for strike one. Whippets up one to nothing here in the first inning. Whippet, uh, first inning is for Whippets off ball, presented by Atala County Bank. Ingram, you know, the, the Clare and Ledger puts out the uh, 25 players to watch in the postseason. Ingram was one of those players. She shows bunt right there and pulls it back to strike two. But Ingram was one of those, and Brandy Bond was also one of those 25 players to watch. Uh, Whippets had a couple. Uh, Mary Kimball Price and I believe Anna Grace Whitehead were both on that players to watch list for the Clarion Ledger. One, two, pitch from Whitehead. It's hit in the right field. Jones had it played almost perfectly. Runs her to her left, close to the line to haul it in for out number two. Ella Robertson steps in. She's the shortstop. Robertson is the daughter of Coach Dodie Robertson. She has a twin, or not a twin. I don't know if it's a twin, but she has a sister on the team. London Robertson that plays in center field. Robertson is a 323 hitter in the regular season. First pitch, strike one, outside corner. Coach Doty Robertson, this is her seventh year coaching at Summerall. And uh, she uh, is also a basketball coach at the school, originally from Oak Grove. So she knows that one's hit up the middle. Diving stop by Dickerson, throwing from her knees, gets her out at first base. One, two, three, inning for the Whippet. Great defensive play by Dickerson, and the Bobcats are retired in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Whippets lead it one to nothing. Back in 60 seconds. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are in a Independently owned and operated. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko leads it one to nothing in game one of the 4A state championship game. And uh, we'll go to the top of the second inning. Second innings, Whippet Softball presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. Six, seven, and eight in the Whippet lineup due up. That'll be Alexandra West, the catcher. She shows butt as she is wont to do. And hits one in the left field, but right at the left fielder, Ingram. First pitch swinging, aggressiveness at the plate, but Ingram had her played pretty well. Looked like it was going to drop in at first, but Ingram uh, able to run it down and that'll bring up Macy Coleman. Whip it left fielder. See, Coleman is a 200 hitter here in the postseason. 
the 333 hitter in the regular season. She looks at ball one. Pitch from Burkhalter is high. It's the off-speed pitch. And it goes for ball two. Macy Coleman, the Holmes Community College signee. She'll be headed there in the fall. That one's hit in the right field, and Shiles on her horse, able to knock it down, or track it down, I should say. Once again, thought that one was going to be a base hit, but... The outfielders, seniors in the outfield for the Bobcats as Lizzie Kate Jones will step into the batter's box. Jones, a 418 hitter in the regular season. One of the six returning starters for Coach Terry. And that one's hit in the shallow right field. And that'll be a... Two out single for Jones. Now that time, Shouse didn't have it played correctly. She was playing a little bit deep. Anna Grace Mansell stepping in. Said she was the scholar athlete as announced before the game. She had a big game in game two against West Lauderdale. Here in the postseason, she's a 285 hitter. Very aggressive. Likes to swing at the first pitch. And she does. She fouls it off. She had a big double in that 10-run uh, ninth inning that the Whippets put together in game two to beat West Lauderdale. And so we'll give you what the, what the Whippets did to reach here to uh, Southern Miss. As there's one hit on the infield. It's a slow roller. Only play will be at first, and they're able to get the out. So the Whippets go down in order. No runs. Um, oh, excuse me. No, they did have one hit. No runs. One hit, no error, one left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Whippets with a one to nothing lead. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. The Sip and Kosciuszko would like to wish Campbell Blaine and all the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets good luck as they play for the state championship. Whether you're heading out to a game, on your morning commute, or just need a little something to quench your thirst, stop by the Sip in Kosciuszko. Try out our great selection of coffee or grab a fresh fruit smoothie or frappe. We also have great food items for breakfast and lunch. The Sip and Kosciuszko. Go Whippets! Boswell Media Sports. One to nothing, Kosciuszko in the lead here in game one of the 4A State Championship Series. Uh, the, earlier today, that was uh, Vardaman defeating Taylorsville 4-2 to two in uh, the 1A State Championship. In the 3A State Championship, 6-1, to one, uh, Boonville defeats Enterprise Clark. And right before us here, it was Neshoba Central defeating East Central 7-0 uh, to nothing in the 5A State Championship. 4, 5, and 6 will come to the plate for the Bobcats. In uh, this bottom of the second inning, Brandy Bond looks at strike one from Anna Grace Whitehead. Bond, a 392 hitter with three home runs. So I think that's a power in this lineup. Do the Bobcats. That pitch comes way high for ball one. But we were talking to you about Coach Robertson, originally from Oak Grove. She coached basketball and slow pitch softball at Oak Grove, which is you know, the west end of town here in Hattiesburg, basically. And uh, the husband, her husband coached baseball as that one's hit into shallow right field. Lizzie K. Jones will come up and make the catch for out number one. One down in the inning. And her husband is also the assistant coach. So husband and wife coach in tandem there. Uh, you know, that's, a, that's brave. Not a lot of married couples could uh, handle that. 
A lot of them can't handle living in the same house, let alone coaching a stressful job, but more power to the Robertsons. And so they've been coaching together for over 20 years. So as that pitch is called strike one to Ashland Burkhalter, the pitcher. Uh, is it Burke? No, it's not Burkhalter. It's Stringfellow. We'll tell you about her coming up. But Burkhalter, I uh, have her as a 378 hitter. Leads the team in doubles with nine. And she looks at strike one there. Sort of inside corner fastball for strike one from Whitehead. Whippets lead one to nothing. Second innings for Whippets softball presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. That's high outside ball too. Might might have a, another voice coming in and joining me here on the broadcast in just a moment. Kind of set some things in motion there early. You know, we like to get some uh, other people in on the broadcast, so I'll leave you with that. That ball's hit to shortstop Dickerson. She'll haul it over and uh, uh, safe at first base is Burkhalter. Hit deep in the hole. Good job by Dickerson just to get to it. And a good enough throw to make it a close play at first, but it will be an infield single. And uh, we'll probably have a courtesy runner come in for the uh, pitcher. we got to get you that number. So, long hair on the runner. Can't quite make it out yet. We might have to wait for the PA. Number 10, okay. Trinity Stokes. So we got Stringfellow at the plate, and this is what Coach Terry said that the team likes to do. They like to bunt. So imagine you might see Stringfellow lay down a bunt right here. She's great at the plate, a 349 hitter, and uh, she's got a, a big decision to make. She's got a couple of offers to play college sports, but I don't know which one. We'll tell you about that after this pitch from Whitehead, and she does show bunt. Pitch is high, ball one. Stringfellow. Fielding offers from Southwest Mississippi for softball. She also has an uh, offer from Pearl River for soccer. And has yet to make that decision is what I am told. So, so she might not want to play sports in college. She shows bun again. Pitch comes high again for ball two. Yeah, sometimes, you know, players, they play Softball, baseball all their lives from the time they're little. So by the time they get to college, some of them just, just want to go to college, right? You don't want to have to worry about, you know, still playing and all of that. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Sometimes you, you might play because you need to get the college paid for, which is understandable. But apparently, stringfellow has got some options. And third straight pitch is high out of the zone for ball three. Yeah, stringfellow is definitely – Sold on bunting here. It's just 3-0 pitch. About to be thrown from Whitehead. We have Stokes on first. and They say that's 2-2. Two and two. Did I miss one? And, uh, Okay, it is two and two. I don't know where I got mine from. Must have written one down. Maybe one of those bunts did stay out there and I didn't call it. But there's a little dribbler. It'll be foul down the line at third. So it's a two-two count. Stokes was headed out. So there's the old hit and run. One to nothing. Kosciuszko leads it in the bottom of the second inning. This game is going a lot quicker than that Neshoba Central game. Boy, that game lasted a long time. And he, I don't have to tell you, all you Whippet fans that were, you know, waiting to hear the broadcast. Now that pitch is high outside for ball three. Yeah, y'all are a lot of folks texting, asking if the game got canceled. And then, oh, it's the fourth game of the day. And uh, we'll tell you about why we're playing so late after this payoff pitch from Whitehead. And that one's hit in a shallow right field. It's down for a base hit. The runner's going to attempt to get to third, and she's in there safely. So, there'll be runners on the corners with one out. And Brett Lofton, the catcher, coming to the plate. Good piece of hitting there by Stringfellow. Just took an opposite field, and it looked like it might fall foul for a little bit. But it fell down in front of uh, Jones, so... 
Runners on the corners with one out and Brett Lofton, the catcher, stepping in. A 350 batting average for Lofton. Sophomore. High and a snap throw down to third is behind the runner. Not in time. Expect to see Stringfellow moving over to second just as quickly as she can. Get two runners in scoring position. That one's hit in a shallow center field and a fall in front of Jones. And the run will come home to score, and that will tie the ball game. So three straight singles, and we got a tie game. Stokes comes around to score for Burkhalter. Yeah, just good pieces of hitting. Just going off the right side and kind of finding the gaps for the uh, for the Lady Bobcats. Ties us at one. Runners on first and second. Courtesy runner, Kara Applewhite. For the catcher, Lofton. Summer Powers, the designated player, will come in. Summer Powers, let's see if we have any anything for her. We do, a 319 hitter. And they send power up and down the lineup for Coach Robertson. The reason they're here in this championship series. She swings at the rise ball. For strike one. Lundy Robertson on deck. Then we go back to the top of the order. Lady Bobcats have tied it in the bottom of the second. There's one, There's one high for ball one to Summer Powers. Here are the summer all fans. They got cowbells and other noise makers. Whew. That one was called off the plate. Whitehead wanted that pitch, but nothing gonna be just a little outside, 2 1. You got some Kosciuszko whip it. I think baseball players made the trip. They're standing out in center field. And that pitch is, I guess, low for ball three. So 3 1 count to summer powers. Yeah, some Kosciuszko. Uh, Guys out there, I think they, got, they kind of got something spelt across their chest. They can't make it out. We'll have to figure out what that is. 3-1. That's high. Gracie Williams going out on the grass and will make the catch for out number two. Technically, that could have been ruled an infield fly, but it'll be a pop-up out, and then it'll be two outs in the inning. Remember the wild card game in Atlanta from back in – 2012, where infield fly was called on a ball hit just out of the infield. So, not unheard of for that infield fly call to be made on something like that. Lindy Robertson hits one into center field, and Campbell Blaine moves to her left and will haul it in for the final out. But the Bobcats tie the game. One run on three hits. No errors and two left on base. We're tied at one through two innings. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi. I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighborhood service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, and that place is... Ta-da! 
State Farm on Highway 2. Here's the deal. Angel Alvin McDonald's State Farm team is your go-to in Atala County for the service you deserve at the price you want. So stop shopping around. The team at Angel Alvin McDonald's office on Highway 12 has you covered. Call 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. We'll head to the third inning of play here from the campus of Southern Miss. we got a tie ball game between Kosciuszko and Summerall. Game one of the 4A State Championship Series. We're going to go back to the top of the order with McKinley Dickerson to lead things off. She was hit by a pitch to start the game and ended up coming around to score on that triple by Campbell Blaine. That was hit right back up the middle for a base hit for Dickerson. So Dickerson leads off with a single. And we'll just have a runner on. Hey, I told you we're going to have uh, someone coming on to hang out with us, and we do. We have Whippet, you know, uh, I guess quarterback slash Region 4-4A Player of the Year in baseball, Ethan Wood. Ethan, thanks for hopping on the broadcast. Thanks for having me. All right, Ethan. So uh, you were out there with the with the guys in center field, were you? Yes, sir. Yeah. What they got? What they got written on their chest out there? Go Kazi. Okay, go Kazi. And uh, some baseball boys. Yes, sir. All right. I ain't got quite as many fans out there as some They got a packed house here tonight. Yeah, well, we said that it's you know I think about twenty minutes up the road, so it was probably I say about two thirds of the bleachers full. But you know, Kosciuszko fans travel, and Kosciuszko fans are loud. You know a little bit about that from. Football and baseball. Yes, sir. And Price shows bunt, holds it out there. Catch was uh, Pitch was dropped by Lofton, and Dickerson able to take second base. So 2-0 count to Mary Kimball Price. So uh, even while we have you here, we'll talk about so what's a, playing in big games like this. Of course, y'all had the Ponda Talk series a few weeks ago in baseball. And so uh, kind of what do you do? Does that one sit deep in the right field? Going back, and Shouse makes the catch on the run, but Dickerson is going to be able to tag and get to third base. So, fly out to right field. That's the second one she's gone out and gotten. She's pretty good. She's yeah. She's got some range. Yeah, Shouse out there has, has some wheels. They're going to appeal to second. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't leave early. Dickerson's just got some speed. But, yeah, so uh, an environment like this, what, what do the coaches tell you when you go into this kind of hostile kind of territory? Well, they'll tell you, you know, just treat it like every other game. And, you know, it's hard to do that because, you know, going to a game of this magnitude, it's just hard to not, you know, feel all the pressure around you. But when you get out there and actually start playing, you know, it just feels like another game, you know. Nothing big deal. You know, you prepared for this. And, you know, softball's been prepared for this all year. They're probably used to this. You know, they play big games like this all the time. First pitch to Whitehead's off the plate. Yeah, and that's what Coach Terry kind of says in our interviews is that, you know, they've you know, seven straight North State championships. A lot of the teams been, you know, a lot of girls have been on those teams. And that one's hit to shortstop. Only play will be at first. Good scoop at first, but it brings a run in. The Whippets break the tie on the 6-3 putout, and the Whippets take, reclaim the lead at 2-1. to one. But Yeah, Whitehead, she's kind of – She's kind of been that this year for the, for the Whippets. You know, uh, she's a power hitter, but also she's a clutch hitter. She's a very good player. I'm glad we got her. I mean, uh, they always talk about the transfer portal in college, but I'm glad we got her from the transfer portal in high school. She's been a really great uh, addition to the team. You know, she's been really good on the bump, and she's been really good at the plate. And She's been really, in my opinion, one of the best players I've ever seen play in high school softball. Yeah, she is good as Campbell Blaine fouls the first one off. Of course, she transferred in from – Winston Academy and uh, just a sophomore. So, uh, Whippet fans uh, hopefully have a few more years of, of Whitehead uh, here. And, and you look at the look at the infield when you have uh, – Campbell Blaine fouls off the changeup. You, you have your infield only one senior as a year leader. You get Rutherford at first base. Uh, after that, you got Williams, a junior, at second. Uh, West, a junior, behind the plate. A Whitehead in the circle. Then your left side of your infield is freshman. So, you got <laughs> got a lot of – Hopefully a lot more games left with them. Yes, sir. Bright future ahead for these guys for sure. That one was high outside for ball one. Campbell Blaine, the SIP wishes Campbell Blaine a successful series. Yeah, this successful bat last time with a triple and a run score. Drove in a run. 
That one must have been a little low off the plate for ball one. Ethan, I'll tell you, you know a little something about speed. Campbell, she's you know, one of the fastest softball players I've ever seen. She can roll. Yeah. I mean, that got, ball looked like a double to me, but she got on third pretty easily. She almost could have gone home. She waits on that one, and it's off the glove of Robertson. It's shortstop. It'll be a two-out base hit for Campbell Blaine. Blaine with a couple of hits here. and got a runner at second, and Gracie Williams digging in. And you got two. It's not often you see two dandy dozens back-to-back -back in the lineup between Blaine and Williams. It's always a good thing to have. Yeah, I mean, it'd be like in, in football if you had a dandy dozen quarterback and running back on the same team, right? Yes, this, sir. Not something that happens uh, very often. I think we'll see a few more dandy dozens on this team next year. Yeah, probably so. Blaine's going to try to steal second. She's in. Throw was off the side. Of the bag. There you go with the speed of Blaine. I want to see a race between Blaine and Kirby, the leadoff batter for uh, West Lauderdale. I'd like to see a foot race on that one. They're both pretty swift. But two to two to one, Kosciuszko in the lead. Gracie Williams hits one in the right field. Shouls uh, camps under and makes the catch, but the Whippets get one run. On two hits, no errors, and one left on base. They lead it two to one. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning. To the providers at Premier Medical Group Kosciuszko and Trace Urgent Care, your good health is their priority. That's why it's so important to take advantage of your insurance's wellness visit and Healthy You appointments with Premier Medical Group. Hello, I'm Dr. Gray Wallace, reminding you that it's important to maintain your health and wellness by taking advantage of your annual wellness or Healthy You benefit provided by your insurance plan. We can help you maintain your health and prevent illnesses like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Premier Medical Group, Kosciuszko, 289-1800 and Premier Medical Group, Trace Urgent care 289-9155 Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance when you hit the road Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance one stop complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Third innings for Whippets Softball are presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Whippets lead it 2-1 to one over Summerall. They'll send the top of the order to the plate. Anna Grace Shows, the right fielder. She's been She's been busy out in right field. And she's going to show the slap butt, and Price plays it on the glove, throws, and they're going to call her safe at first. Ooh, bang, bang, play. Price played it as well as she could. But that'll be a infield single. Oh, yeah, that was a close play over at first. Ethan Wood back with us here on the broadcast. Kind of just go whip it. Baseball, football player. And, Ethan, you were telling me about the the, the the guys coming in from center field, there's a lot of football, baseball, soccer, just a lot of them out there, right? Yes, sir. So, let's see. We got a time called. I'm not sure. Who, I think Ingram called time. I thought that maybe the coach wanted to talk to her, but let's see if they show bunt. They do. The throw down to first is... Not in time. Shouls slides in under it. That'll be ball one. But that was our scouting report for this team is I like to do a little small ball. You played for Coach Jones for a long time, so you know a little bit about some small ball. Yes, sir, no doubt about that. <laughs> Big win for him last night. Yeah. Yeah, small ball, what he does best. <laughs> yeah. He's a great coach. Oh, that one's bunted foul. But, yeah, that's what they like to do. They're fast, and, uh, you know, that kind of puts the pressure on the, on the defense there that, that small ball does. Yes, sir. So you got you know you got your your third baseman kind of playing in and Rutherford playing in at first. So you see what they could do. They got a lefty. They could slap it down like they did and get that old infield single. Kind of feel like they, you know, it almost feels like the cheating one there. Yes, sir. But Ingram had a pop fly to right field back in the first inning. Joe's bunt again and fouled it off again off the home plate. So it'll be one ball, two strikes to count. 
Whippets lead it two to one. A couple of runs scored by McKinley Dickerson. The leadoff batter for Kosciuszko. And this is Shaley Ingram, the second batter in the lineup. For Summerall and hits one in the shallow left field. Diving and it's going to get past Coleman in left field. Blaine's going to be up with it. Here comes the throw home and it's going to be cut off. And coming around to score from first is Shouse, and we got a tie ball game. Yeah, Coleman diving for that one. It'll be a double uh, for Ingram. But yeah, Coleman putting her body on the line there, trying to make the play. And it looked like she was going to come up with it, but that's a that's a tough one. And, you know, she's kind of shaking up out there in, in, in left field. Looks like she's going to be all right. Well, there's our, so I haven't even mentioned the left field lounge, so to speak, out here. That's that's pretty full. Ethan, you've been out there closer than I was. You think that's mostly some Raw fans? Yes, sir, no doubt about that. <laughs> I know some of the Whippet fans said they were going to go out there. Up the middle, Dickerson plays it behind the circle and will throw to first for the first out. The runner will advance. But a great play by Dickerson in the 6-3 put out. So we yeah, tied it two. That'll bring up Brandy Bond, the third baseman. She a pop fly ball out to right field to lead off the second inning. But, yeah, I know some of the Whippet fans said they were going to go out there and sit out in the old left field bleachers. There's not, not a lot of bleachers out there. And that one's hit the Dickerson at short. She catches it out of the air and throw back to third, not in time. But two big outs there for the Whippets. And that'll bring up Burkhalter. Burkhalter had the... Big hit in the second inning, and then ended up coming around to score. Well, she's the pitcher. She singled and scored. That was a three hits in a row. Pitch is high for ball one. So you got a runner at third base, a tie ball game. They're in the bottom of the third inning. There's the 1 0 pitch. Swinging. Strike one. Well, oh, it's a good-looking pitch there from Whitehead. That was a good changeup. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you if you've ever taken BP against one of your softball classmates and how different it is between, uh, you know, picking up the rise ball or picking up a curve ball from a, you know, from a baseball mound. I can't say I have, but I, <laughs> Laura Beth, she plays on the team. She's my sister, and she says it's pretty hard to hit a rise ball. So I believe it. I imagine it's pretty hard to hit Whitehead. She throws pretty hard. Yeah, she's she throw you that changeup. She's hitting about 60 there, but, yeah, that one, that change up off the plate. What, what gets Whitehead is she's pounding that 60 fa fastball and then hits that change up. Yeah, that's, she's hard to hit against for that's sure. That's difficult. That one comes inside a little bit low. I think that was that change up. That will make it three and one to Burkhalter. She's been real consistent all year. You know, she's started just about every game for us, and she's done a really good job. Well, and she's throwing all but one inning here in the postseason. 3-1 pitch is hit through the side at right field, and it'll get past Jones, and they'll try to get her at second, and they will not. So that'll be a single and probably an error out in right field. And she advances to second on the error. Now, Jones got to it. And it just kind of hit her glove and kind of bounced off to the side. The ball was hit pretty hard. Yeah, it was hit through the right side of the field. And we'll have that uh, Stokes will come in to run for Burkhalter. And Stringfellow comes in. So the Lady Bobcats take a 3-2 to two lead over Kosciuszko. That's another thing about Whitehead. She throws so hard, she gets a lot of hard contact towards the right side of the field. Yep. So Stringfellow had a single her last at bat. She swings at that changeup and just gets a little bit of it and fouls it off. So that'll make it three, excuse me, oh, no balls, one strike. Whitehead doesn't like that. So, Ethan, you're a pitcher. What are you looking at when you when you get rid of the ball and get a new one? Uh, most of the time it's either because they're wet or because they got a cut in it. <laughs> me, I like to get brand new ones. I don't like them with dirt on them or anything like that. I like them fresh out the box pearls. Yeah, so she didn't like that one either. So she got a Get a new one there. Appreciate you being on. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, three to two. Whippets 
Trying to get out of the inning here. And that one comes up high, and I think it hit off the edge of the bat. Yeah, she showed bunt and came up inside, and it hit up high around the handle, but it will be a foul ball. Yeah, that one's a little scary. If you're, if you're Burkhalter, I mean, if you're Stringfellow, and you're, you're squared up staring at a 60-mile-an-hour softball coming at you. There's that changeup that's hit to Dickerson, and she flips it across in time for the out. However, the Bobcats get two runs on three hits, one error, one left on base. After three, Bobcats lead it three to two back in 60 seconds here on Boswell Media Sports. He's without the Wendy's app is like nugs without the sauce. <gasps> Or a Frosty without the fries. <gasps> or a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Level A. Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app-exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. Offer for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Terms apply. App registration required. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S., Alaska, and Canada. When birthdays and special occasions arrive, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts is the best place to shop for fashionable and classic gifts, home decor, jewelry, hobo purses and wallets. They have new spring footwear and clothing arriving daily. And remember, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts has the most recent wedding registry. Whether you're getting married or shopping for the bride and groom, shop Sullivan's. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 across from McDonald's in Kosciuszko. <laughs> Boswell Media Sports. Lady Whippets trail it as we start the fourth inning. Fourth innings for Whippets softball are presented by the Itala County Co-op. And let's see, it should be six, seven, and eight new up for the Whippets in this inning. That will be Alexandra West, Macy Coleman, and Lizzie Kate Jones. Uh, West lined one out. To Shows in the first or in the second inning. Pitch is low from Burkhalter for ball one. Uh, West has uh, done a lot. She's actually hitting above her average in the postseason. Let's see, in the regular season, she hit 275. Postseason, she's hitting at 368. Uh, pitch also off the plate for ball two. Coach Terry saying, uh, you know, she kind of been working, changing, changing the stance a little bit there. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, showing the old, shows the bunt, and then tries to get the bat back quickly, and that one's going to land in front. No, it rolls past uh, Ingram in left field. West on her horse. She's headed to second base for the leadoff. Uh, well, there won't be a double. It'll probably be an error, but a good job there by West. We told you, as I said, she able to put the bat out there and then get a little bit quicker bat speed. It's another Coach Jones things right there. He's big on the slash. <laughs> exactly. And uh, let's see if they score that an error. Gracie Kate Burrell will come in to run for um, West. You have to say the, the names here. We got two Burrells on the team. So <laughs> you can say Burrell. You, uh, nobody will know who they're talking about. They both pinch run. We got Gracie Kate and Kelby. Still no. Uh, they didn't rule that an error. I mean, I'd be glad to give West the, the hit, the double. But, I mean, it did hit right in front of Ingram. It would have been a hard play to make. So, maybe that's what they're – maybe they're giving her a little bit of leniency because she came on yeah, strong. she squared up pretty good right there. Yeah, so. She's been squaring up real good over the postseason. Like you said, she's hitting above her average. And that's just – this team right here has a knack for big games and big moments. It's oh. making big plays. Macy Coleman – Fouls off pitch. Macy Coleman hit it hard out in right field. Got robbed of a, a base hit from Shouse. Shouse got some speed. Pitch high out of the zone for ball one. What pitch trail at three to two. If they have a runner on second, nobody out here in the top of the fourth inning. We'll pray that our scoreboard holds up. There's that change up. It barely makes it to the plate, ball two. She likes that changeup. She's done that a lot. Yeah, we we keep our own book here in the in the press box here. There, or, or I keep it all during my broadcast. But the scoreboard for here at Southern Miss has been kind of 
erratic, to say the least. There's the one hit in the right field once again. Another great play. Shouse is there. I mean, that's the same spot Coleman hit last time. And, I mean, the, to their credit, they do have Coleman shaded uh, where they need to. But that's two that you think going to get down. And Shouse just runs them down. No doubt about that. She's rangy. Yeah. So, that'll bring up Lizzie Kate Jones. Jones had a single back in the first inning. She did hit one out in right field that Shouse couldn't get to. It was a low enough little line drive as that pitch is called strike one. So Jones looks at that one just a little bit off the plate for ball two. But yeah, as you said, Ethan, uh, the Whippet team seems to, to find the hits when they need them. No and doubt the, about that. Pitch Big games, they always just seem to show up. High ball, too, because if you look at them in the, uh, in, in the postseason, nothing's going to stand out about them, about, you know, uh, the, the hits. I mean, you got the home runs from uh, Price and Whitehead, uh, but more so timely hits don't necessarily show up in the uh, broadcast. So... I believe Jones kind of took a stab at that one and it went to the circle and it was thrown out by Stringfellow. But that one kind of came up in and she just kind of hit a defensive swing and she didn't she didn't try to run. She hit the ground. So it'll go down as an out, but Burrell able to take third on the play. So a runner six feet away and Anna Grace Mansell stepping into the plate. Mansell popped out her last time at, at bat. Yeah, that was a self-defense hack right there. She got inside on her right there. Let's see. If, I almost thought it hit her helmet. Let's see if Mansell swings at the first pitch. She's known to do that. She does. It's a chopper up the middle. Play to the right. And good defensive play by Stringfellow. Retires the side for the Whippets. There were no runs on one hit, one error, and one left on base. So we'll go to the... Bottom of the fourth inning with the Bobcats leading it 3-2. to two. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm. Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. Here on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, Summerall leads Kosciuszko 3-2. This is game one of the 4A North State, or no, the 4A State Championship. You get used to saying North so often, you, you get you get used to it. As 7, 8, and 9 do to come to the plate for Summerall. Fourth innings for women's softball presented by Italian County Co-op. Brett Lofton, the catcher. She's due up. She singled and drove in a run back in the second inning. First pitch called strike one. Joined by Ethan Wood, Kosciuszko Whippet football, baseball player, going to be headed to Holmes in yes, the sir. fall. And it was Macy Coleman going to be there with you out in left field. She'll be there. Uh, was it Will Carter? Yes, sir. Connor, Wall Connor Wallace? Yes, sir. Uh, Connor Wallace going to be there. A lot of... A lot of folks going to be traveling down to Goodman. Yeah, swinging over the top of that one was Lofton. The bottom just fell out of that. But yeah, this uh, Summerall team, this is their first uh, appearance in the state championship series. This is Kosciuszko's fourth. So it'll be with the fourth in five years, 2017, 2018, 2021, and 2022. Of course, didn't have a season 
in 2020. That was the COVID season. Everybody got shut down for that. No balls, two strikes. High. Out of the zone. But the reason we're playing so late here is that Kosciuszko has graduation on Friday and Summerall has graduation on Thursday. So they worked out a deal to play their games today and tomorrow. And then if a game of threes needed to be back on Saturday. Same thing with Neshoba Central and East Central. They're both playing their games today and tomorrow. That pitch low in the dirt for ball two. So uh, normally here there should have been three games. It would have been 1A, 3A, and 5A today, 2A, 4A, and 6A tomorrow, and then wash, rinse, and repeat. But because of the, the graduation situation, four games today, four games tomorrow. Well, I think it'll kind of help Whitehead a little bit also because she'll get these two games back-to-back, -back, and if we do end up going to a game three, she'll be good and rested by Saturday. But also, you know, we've got Mary Kimball Price and Gracie Williams who have had some big innings on the mound for them also. Yeah, uh, Gracie Williams has said she's the only young – she pitched that final inning of the Yetawamba game. That was a game one in the postseason. One inning pitch, she didn't give up a hit. She struck out, you know, uh, one batter. But that, other than that, it's been, it's been a, a steady dose of Whitehead. But, you know, if you're Coach Terry, you do got Williams sitting there. You yes, Williams sir. and Price. And Price pitched here last year. Yes, sir. So no doubt about that. Uh, yeah. Price did a good job here last year, and Williams has really stepped up this year. You know, uh, Emil Kelly graduated, and uh, Whitehead moved in, so they didn't know who was going to be pitching. And, you know, Williams has stepped up big time. Yeah. And uh, Price was an eighth grader last year pitching, you know, pitching here in the uh, in the state championship that you think, you know, sometimes uh, – Stage might be too big for someone, but she had a home run here last year in, in, in the uh, in the state championship, and she's come uh, pretty close in her only her two at bats here so far. Yes, sir. She's been scoring it up good. She's due for sure. Uh, so two two count to Lofton is hit to Dickerson, plays it off a hop. Another good play by Dickerson. Yeah, right Dickerson stout defense up the middle for the six three put out. Summer Powers, the designated player, will step in. And she popped out to Gracie Williams back in the second inning. Whippets trailing at 3-2. to two. Thanks for listening in, whether you're doing that on Breezy 101, breezynews.com, the Breezy 101 app, or maybe you found the YouTube live audio-only stream. Now, we are, on, we are on YouTube, but we can't do any video because we're not allowed. Pitch high out of the zone for ball one. There is a... Uh, NFHS uh, gets exclusive rights to the video broadcast, so we're not allowed to do that, but we have the video, audio-only video feed, if that makes any sense. High inside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count to Summer Powers. Let's see. Yep, no. Summer all got here by defeating North Pike for a while there. It looked like the Whippets might have a rematch of last year's State championship as that pitch is high out of the zone for ball three. Uh, Summerall won game one, eight to six over North Pike in eight innings. Lost game two, three to nothing, and then won game three, three to two to keep that rematch from happening. Walked her on four straight. Not something that Whitehead does a lot. She doesn't, doesn't walk many. In fact, just her 26th walk of the season. Alexander West will walk the ball back out and hand it to Whitehead. As Lundy Robertson stepping in. She's the elder of the two Robertsons in the lineup. She's one of those, those senior outfielders that you and I were talking about off the air, Ethan. First pitch is inside for strike one. Big pitch there by um, Whitehead. You know, if you hadn't found the zone yet, uh, how important is it to come back and next batter and get a strike? It's very important. It looked like that last at bat, Whitehead was maybe overthrowing a little bit. And, uh, you know, bottom of the order, she's probably just trying to attack with fastballs and maybe just overthinking it too much. And Wes went up there and talked to her, and uh, looks like she's settling in. Bunt laid down. Price will throw it to Williams covering. So, sack Bunt works to send the runner to second base. Let's see, it'll be 5-4 on the sack Bunt put out. So we'll go back to the top of the order and Anna Grace Shouse. She's that speedy right fielder. Last time she kind of slapped one down. It was a bang bang play at first base. Could have gone either way, but she slapped the butt down to third base. And Price played it about as well as she could have. Just a, a you know good run. We've been talking about how Shouse has some wheels on her 
in the outfield. So she she does at the plate as well. She's made some big plays. Yeah, she she can roll. Yeah, she holds off on that one for ball one's high. But yeah, three seniors in the outfield for this uh, summer all team, and we got our uh, scouting report uh, from summer all. That's what the first thing says as that pitch is hit up the middle, and it'll get through. And the run will come around to score. Shouls continues to show out as that's a single and an RBI. And it increases the lead by one to make it four to two. It shows you how those walks can come back to, to haunt you if you're Kosciuszko. Well, anybody, really. But, yeah, the, the outfield is what Coach Robertson really uh, hangs her hat on when we got the scouting report that said all the outfielders are seniors and have all been recruited to play junior college ball. Pop up on the infield, and excuse me, it's foul and foul territory. West gives chase, has it in her glove, and must have popped out when she hit the front of the dugout. Yeah, I couldn't see it looked like she was going to bring that one in, but popped out of her glove and it'll be just a strike is that's Shaley Ingram Ingram with the double her last at bat and they'll try to get the runner in second and she is out great throw by West to nail Shouse down at second however the Bobcats get one run on one hit no errors and nobody left on base through four Kosciuszko trails at four to two. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. Central Tire Service, across from Louvel on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. You bought lumber and you're ready to start digging post holes for that new fence, but not so fast. Do you know where your underground utilities are located? Central Electric Power Association urges you to call 811 for a free marking of underground electric lines and other utilities. Making the call before you dig can prevent a serious or fatal injury, plus it's the law in Mississippi and please work safely around power lines. Central Electric Power Association, serving you since 1937. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Quick rolling ball game here in game number one of this 4A state championship series. Fifth innings for Whippet Softball are presented by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Hashtag rough, ain't it? Whippets need some runs here as they trail it by two. They'll have the opportunity with the top of the order coming to the plate. Dickerson sticks the bat out there, and it kind of hits off the handle. It was that changeup, and I don't think Dickerson really meant the bat to get anywhere near it, but it did. Dickerson today scored both of the Whippets' runs. She uh, was hit by a pitch in the first inning and uh, singled in the third, came around to score both times. Oh, she was hit by a pitch she went three times against West Lauderdale in game two. So doing a good job of just finding ways to get on base. That time she looks at strike two right down the middle. Ethan Wood still hanging out in the broadcast booth with us. More like the it's like a freezer in here. They got it. The AC turned up. That one's hit in a deep right field. Shao's on her horse. Another good play. And then catches it in foul territory. She's having a game. She is. Yeah, that one. There's a whole lot of foul territory here at the ballpark. Yeah, that would have been out at just about every other high school ballpark. Yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah, a whole lot of foul ball territory as Mary Kimball Price steps to the plate. Price has done the same thing both times. Deep fly balls to right field. Once again, two really good plays by the right fielder. Yeah. She's been real consistent, real good out there. Opened her with this, like a change up, maybe a little bit of a curve there. But yeah, as you mentioned off the air, they ain't got to be pitching Price outside. 
As though she's the leading home run hitter on the team. They don't want to give her a chance to turn on one. That one's a fastball just a little off the plate. Well, that's where we really get dangerous is when you start pitching around Price and you have to worry about Whitehead and you have to worry about Blaine and you have to worry about Williams and Coleman and West. And we just got a really good lineup one through nine. A lot of contact hitters in this lineup. That one is called a strike. It wasn't too far removed from where the previous pitch was. Maybe, maybe, maybe brought it up just a little bit, but still outside corner. One, two count to Price. That one's hit in the right field. I think it's going to be foul. Uh, that time, Shal's not able to get to it, but it was a line drive. Yeah. Price got robbed of one, hitting the gap in, in right center, and Shal's had to run and basically uh, almost make the uh, – it's not really the over-the-shoulder catch, but she's running to her right, and she's right-handed, so the glove's on her left hand. So uh, kind of a hard play to make. But That was a really good play. I was sitting out in center when she made that play, and I didn't think there was a way she was going to catch that ball. Well, that one's hit in the left field, and it's going to bounce, take one hop, and they're going to send Price to second base. She'll be in there with a stand-up double. There you go. Shows you what happens when you pitch the freshman the inside. And that one, one hop to the fence. They were living outside, and they were getting that call and leaving over the plate, and that's what happened with her. Well, brings up Anna Grace Whitehead. Whitehead is 0 for 2. She did drive in a run in a fielder's choice back in the third. And we'll get a pinch runner. That's Kelly Goss coming in to run for Price. Oh, Whippets might want a little bit more speed out there. She runs over and talks to Coach Tony Terry. Whitehead is someone who could change the complexion of the game with uh, one swing. She's second on the team in home runs. Uh, she's got five on the season, a couple of them here in the postseason. Well, not that she's looking home run right here. She's still got plenty of time in the ball game. With Goss at second, base hit probably gets you a run. And Whippets need a run as they trail it by two in the top of the fifth. It's popped up foul. I think it's going to get out of play, and it will. So, strike one to Whitehead. Whitehead batting 470 in the postseason. That's pretty good. Eight for 17. So, he's got two home runs, two doubles, seven runs driven in. Must have been maybe a little high and off the plate. Yeah, well, that, that corner call is not all, not all that consistent. I mean, most of the calls have been consistent this evening, but that one can kind of get tricky. Both pitchers kind of figure out that one's popped up. And calling everybody off is Ella Robertson. Makes the catch about six feet behind the bag at third. And that is out number two. I told... Another broadcaster, when we were swapping notes about, you know, Kosciuszko's, and you got to give them strength and weaknesses. I said, great pitching, great defense. I said, if you got a weakness, pop-ups. A lot of pop-ups, you know. That's what, that's what Kosciuszko can do. to get under the ball and, you know, kind of pop them up. Bring Campbell Blaine to the plate. She looks at ball one. Yeah, Whitehead got under that one a little bit, but she's also due. Uh, Blaine today, two for two. A triple and a run driven in in the first and a single in the third. She's been swinging it good. She's hit two really hard balls over there to the left side of the field. Yeah, and they still playing. There's still a big gap over there. And that one comes inside to the lefty Blaine, and he says it stayed a little inside. Yeah, as you mentioned, she's got a couple of gappers out there, and, you know, we, we know the speed they have in center field, but. That's high. Well, she's been living over there in that left center gap, and they're still giving her a lot of room. So, yeah. she hits one right there, it could be trouble. Well, that first one she hit, split them perfectly and rolled to the fence. And uh, did I say she had a double? I mean, she had a triple. Can't read my writing as that's ball four. They didn't want any part of Campbell Blaine. That's what that was. First base open. Yeah, that was a unintentional, intentional walk. So, exactly what that was. I'll get to Gracie Williams. But, as you mentioned earlier, you go from one dandy dozen – to another. Yeah, that's always a good thing when you <laughs> yeah. got a dandy us and uh, hitting 
yeah. five and six hole. Yeah. You know, that's Pro pretty good. Protecting your other dandy dozen in the lineup. So Gracie Williams, 0 for 2 here in this game. But Excuse we, me, 4 and 5 hole. But pitches low ball one. But we know what Gracie Williams can do. As we said, she got the game winning hit last year in the extra innings against North Pike. And Coach Robertson wants to talk to her pitcher. 4-2, to two, Kosciuszko trailing it in the uh, top of the fifth inning. Whip, it's the visiting team today. They'll be the home team tomorrow. And if a game three is needed, uh, they'll do well, – actually, they've already done a coin flip. We, I, we don't know the result of that. They, they do that when they get here. Um, but they've already done a coin flip, so we won't know what happens there. But game two is tomorrow mid-afternoon. The first game of the day starts at one. We're the second game of the day, so that could be three, uh, could be three. Uh, 3.30, you know, somewhere around then. It just kind of depends. But the meeting in the circle is over. Gracie Williams with a 1-0 count. Burke Halter winds, delivers, strike. Yep. Good-looking pitch there from Burke Halter, able to come back and find one after she'd missed the zone five pitches in a row. That's probably what Coach Robertson wanted to talk about. That one's hit back up the middle, off the glove of... Robertson and, I mean, Burkhalter and everybody's safe. So, yeah, good play there, or good job by Williams to keep chugging out. It hit off of Burkhalter's glove off her hand, and then Ella Robertson grabbed it and threw to first, but no one able to be thrown out as the bases will be loaded for Alexandra West. West today uh, got a double. Or depending on what you call it, maybe a single, then an error. We're not 100% sure how they scored that in the book. But she ended up on second base after a ball got past the left fielder. That one's hit up the middle, and it's booted. And everybody going to be safe. Whippets trying to bring a run home. They do. They tie the ball game. Yeah. Smart base running by the Whippets has tied the game. A great job there by West. It will be an error. That's an error. Speed right there, Campbell Blaine just ground ball to the second baseman, just scored from second. Yeah, that's an error. And Williams will be safe at second. And Kelly Goss comes around to score from third. A tie ball game there. Two runs batted in for West. And you know, Stringfellow, just like she probably rushed herself a little bit. It was hit. Easy ground ball. She probably could have just tagged Williams running by. That one's hit back up the middle from Coleman. They're going to send Williams home. They're going to try to send someone to third, and they do. Whippets reclaim the lead five to four. So Coleman with the single. And let's see, that would be Gracie Williams that came around to score. And yeah, Whippet fans wanted to make sure that the scoreboard got that extra run up there. They, they kind of got caught sleeping when Campbell Blaine came around to score. But, yeah, a whole lot to unpack there for you. Coleman singles through the middle at center field. Gracie Williams comes around to score. Did they bring in a runner for West? I don't think they did. No, sir. Yeah, so West, she hoops it over to third base and Coleman at first. But, yeah, going back to the play, the string fellow, uh, when they could have got Alexander West out, it was a routine ground ball hit to second, and Stringfellow probably could have picked it up and tagged Williams right in front of her. I think she might have rushed herself just a little bit. She, when she went to come up, the ball didn't come up with her. Well, that's another good thing that happens, you know, when you put the ball in play, especially when you're doing that slash. You know, Coach Jones is always big on the slash. You know, it helps you put the ball in play and shorten up a little bit. West, ever since she started doing it, she's really been swinging the stick really good. Uh, so, uh, Coach Robertson walks out to the circle to – Speak to her pitcher. Are we having a pitching change? I guess we are. Yep, we're going to have a pitching change. So we'll step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll tell you about this. Whippets lead at 5-4. to four. Back in 30 seconds here at Boswell Media Sports. Place where you can get good neighborhood service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance. Yep, and that place is. Ta da! 
State Farm on Highway 2. Here's the deal. Angel Alvin McDonald State Farm Team is your go-to in Atala County for the service you deserve at the price you want. So stop shopping around. The team at Angel Alvin McDonald's office on Highway 12 has you covered. Call 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. Coach Robertson and Summerall is going to turn to Avery Smith. And uh, Smith, we get you, let's see, she is a sophomore. Well, we don't have any pitching stats, as I said. They weren't, wait, no, Smith? No, it's Bond that we have stats for. Uh, Smith, we do know she came in in game three against North Pike and uh, closed out that game. So they like to do that. They go Burkhalter Smith, and they usually let Bond try to go the, uh, the complete game. But uh, Lizzie Kate Jones will come to the plate, and Whippets lead it 5-4 to four in the bottom of, or the top of the fifth inning. Runners on the corners. That one comes inside for ball one. So, Ethan, you know, when you got a pitching change like this, and it, a little bit of a different look. We haven't got a, a lot of look at Smith yet, but what are you looking for when a new pitcher comes in if you're uh, – if you're these whip it batters. Well, me personally, when I'm seeing a new pitcher go in, I'm knowing they're probably not used to that angle, you know, being on the mound. It's a lot different from the bullpen and all that good stuff. And uh, probably going to be expecting a lot of fastballs because they're probably not used to their breaking ball or their change up from that angle quite yet. And uh, just expecting a lot of fastballs. And really, they've been throwing a lot of fastballs tonight and they've been working them in and out really well. Now, Whippets had the hit and run on right there as Jones fouls it off. Coleman was digging for second. Came in on the hands of Jones. Jones has a single in the ball game. She singled in the second, grounded. At, well, she had that defensive swing back in the fourth inning where she just kind of went down. Ball came up, but it hit the bat. That was high for ball, too. Looks like they're working her inside a lot. You know, like you said, the self-defense swing last at bat. She's had two or three inside this at bat. Yeah, she came. it came inside, and she just kind of went to the ground, but she kind of did a swinging motion and hit it back to the pitcher. There's another foul ball. That one, ho, oh, coming up here close to us. Booted. Nobody tried to make a play on it. E10. So, we're going to have runners on the corners. Alexander West at third, Macy Coleman at first, and Lizzie Kate Jones at the plate. I'm going to tell the uh, PA that she goes by Lizzie Kate, not Elizabeth. Hit back up the middle. That'll score a run. And they're going to try to you know they had originally – we're going to send Coleman home, but a pretty good throw in from those outfielders and kept her at third base. But Jones with the single back up the middle and a run driven in. Let's see. That's Alexandra West that came in to score. And Anna Grace Mansell stepping up. She'll be the ninth batter to come to the plate this inning. It's been a big inning. It's happened quick. Yeah. So there you go. Man sale. We'll see. A lot of the runs have come on two outs. Yep. Seems to go first pitch swinging. No. Held up right there. So Man sale, very aggressive at the plate. She was big in that game against West Lauderdale game two with the big ten run, a ninth inning. She got a single, but it drove in a couple of runs. There's a little slow roller hit to shortstop. Only plays at first, and it's dropped at first base. And they're going to hold Jones at third. So another run will come in to score on the error. Well, Mansell, let's see, that is Coleman that comes around to score. The Whippets have played it at five here in the inning. They lead it seven to four. Yeah, that's a low throw. Probably going to be an error on the first baseman, I would assume. Well, once again, you know, just putting the ball in play and running down the line, putting pressure on the infield right there. Yeah, we, t we talked about it, you know, the Whippets are, uh, you know, they're, they're putting the ball in play. And are striking out a lot. Taking yeah. some really good at-bats, you know, seeing a lot of good pitches. Yeah, putting the ball in play. And, uh, you know, that was the third time. You mentioned it off the air. Third time through the lineup, you start to kind of figure out the pitcher. And so then Burkhalter got in trouble. They brought in the new pitcher, Smith. And that's – I think we can close the book on Burkhalter. I'll have to get 
luckily we do have live stats here thanks to the great folks at Southern Miss. And we can get you the pitching stats. And let's see, they're the home team. Burkhalter goes four and two thirds, gives up eight hits, seven runs, walks one, strikes out one, faced 25 batters. We'll bring back up McKinley Dickerson. This is her second at bat in the ball game. I mean, in the inning, you can't believe she let off the inning with a foul out. And that one's hit down the line at first, and they'll it's let it ball. They'll keep saying it's a fair ball. It's on the line. They will say fair ball. And that one went right up the line at first, and it was stayed, it stayed on the chalk. As long as it's on the chalk, it's a fair ball. And she picked it up while it was spinning on the chalk. Once again, not hard contact, just putting the ball in play, hustling down the line, and gets the job done. Yeah, that'll be a single. And let's see. And let's see, was Jones came around to score? Yep, Jones came around to score. Mansell goes to second, and Price comes back in. Price got the inning started there with that double. High call to strike one. High strike one. I say that very often, but runners on first and second. Whippets push six across. Yeah, that one's pretty good. It's a good pitch right there, working yeah. around, then working around, changing her eyesight a little bit. Well, a little, took a little bit off of it. Did Avery Smith, who's in the ball game, the what I say she was a probably not going to give her anything to hit right here, too. A freshman. Nope, and it's going to get away from the catcher, and everybody will move up a base. Mansell to third, Dickerson to second. It's probably a pass ball right there. I mean, it was a little high, but catcher got the got the top of the mid on it. Yeah, that was high right there. They're probably going to come back something low here, maybe a changeup or off speed, something that variety. I probably wouldn't pitch to Price right here if I didn't no, have to. Not with first base open. And she hits one off the handle of the bat. As, uh, some are all fans like to claim that that's a fair ball. But can argue all they want to. It was a fair ball. <laughs> Not that one. The one that Nothing Dickerson. You can do about it now. Yeah, the one that Dickerson hit. That was a fair ball. And a makeup call right there. Calls her out looking on an inside changeup. But the Whippets get, what, six runs on four hits. There were two errors and two left on base. Whippets lead at eight to four. We'll be back in a little bit here on Boswell Media Sports. For over 75 years, Abbey Mechanical has been a leader in mechanical construction, heating, air, and plumbing services. Now a part of the second largest mechanical company in the country, Abbey Mechanical brings job stability to central Mississippi and across the southeast. They owe their longevity to their employees with an average 18-year tenure. Proudly headquartered in Kosciuszko, Abbey Mechanical takes pride in their community. They wish the Lady Whippets softball team the best of luck in the state championship. Abby Mechanical, for over 75 years, they continue to be the people you rely on. An equal opportunity employer. Boswell Media Sports. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and the Whippets use a six-run top half of the inning to lead it eight to four. Yeah, lots of runs uh, put in. Brett Riley, Ethan Wood here with you from the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi. Donald back at the studio keeping us on the air. A little late night softball. I told Coach Terry, Ethan, that I think it's nice to play under the lights here. Last few times we've been here, you're the 4A team. So you always get the 3 o'clock ball game every time. 3 o'clock. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the day game, especially because I used to play right field and sun's always in your eyes. And me personally, when I'm a hitter, I prefer playing night games because the ball just pops to me. Yeah. So uh, I do know an issue you kind of run into is uh, looking at signs. You can, but I think lighting's pretty good here at this ballpark. You know, some yes, of the high sir. school ballparks, you kind of run into run into that. And uh, let's see, it should be uh, first pitch is swung on, missed by Ingram. So yeah, it'll be two, three, and four. Hard of the order due up for the. Bobcats, it's Shaylee Ingram. She's got a double 
in the third inning. That one's a foul ball over to the first base dugout. Whippets occupying the first base dugout. Lady Whippets in the all-black uniforms with the Kosciuszko written in maroon and maroon numerals. Most of them have the uh, stirrup style, style, not stirrup style socks, but they have the socks pulled up, pants pulled up to the knees. Some are all with the blue tops, black bottoms. That one's hit and probably going to fall in right field. It will lead off single for Ingram. Really good ID right there. Yeah, two strike hit. Takes it out to right field and it's a lead off single and Ella Robertson steps in. She's the younger of the two Robertson sisters on the team. London is the center fielder, the senior. It's committed and signed with Southwest Community College. Ella Robertson is a eighth grader, an eighth grader. If you're wondering why I can't read, it's, it has years, 2026, 2024. So you kind of got to do the math real quick and figure out what grade they're in. It doesn't say sophomore, freshman, all that stuff. And first pitch to Robertson's high. Ball really good A.B. Like right there by the uh, last batter, the leadoff right there. Uh, who was that? Ingram. Ingram, really good A.B. right there. Got down 0-2. And uh, Whitehead, she throws pretty hard, and then she threw the change up. She did a really, jo really good job keeping her hands back right there. She got out front a little bit. Pop up, center field. Could be trouble. And it is. It'll be go down as a hit as – Four whippets kind of ran in on it there. Dickerson, Williams, Blaine, and Coleman. I think Dickerson got a glove on it as she was running backwards, and uh, it, it falls in. That'll be a hit. As I said, it was a difficult play to make. And yeah, they've been hitting the ball a lot of balls in no man's land tonight. They've been sort of hitting some bloopers and some balls that are just right where we aren't. Uh, Bond, uh, the cleanup batter, is 0 for 2 today. She's hit a couple of pop-ups. She swings over the top of one right there to try to get the runner at third, and they're going to wow. say she's safe. Wow. Whoo, whoo, whoo. Hit and run. Both runners advance. And it was a bang, bang play. Ingram's got some speed. And not too much, you know, objection from the Whippet bench. That one bounces to the plate. It's blocked up nicely by West. We hadn't talked enough about West making the adjustment from left field to catcher here. You know, Whippets had Emma Rush back there. Seemed like for 10 years. You know, I think starting ever since she was about seventh grade. West has done a good job. She stepped up big time this year, especially with Whitehead. I don't know if we've ever had somebody throwing as hard as she does, and West has really done a really good job back there handling her and the rest of the staff as well. Well, that ball's hit to – Shortstop, only play is to first. It'll bring in the run from Ingram, and that'll make the lead eight to five. Kaziesko with the three-run advantage. One down in the inning. Robertson does advance to third base. And Burkhalter is coming in. She's been a, been a dagger for the Bobcats. She's got a pair of singles. Good pitch by Whitehead. Yeah, right there. First pitch called strike. I didn't see if Burke Halter moved anywhere in the field when Smith came in. Obviously, she's still in the batting order, but I don't know if they, you know, if they move somebody, we'll have to check that that defensive change. But that one's blooped in, blooper. into shallow left field, and it's down for a hit. That'll bring in a run. So Burke Halter. Continues to have a good game for the Bobcats, and the Whippet lead is down to two. They haven't been getting a lot of hard contact tonight. They've been getting a lot of bloopers, and Whitehead does a good job missing bats, but tonight they're just they're finding holes. Yeah, they all hit them. part of the game sometimes. Hit them where they ain't is uh, an effective strategy when it comes to softball, baseball. Stringfellow stepping in, the second baseman. She's got a single in the ball game. Fifth innings for Whippet Softball brought to you by Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Check swing there, but she went around. Got her to chase the high one. 
good wide hit. But laid down, and Whitehead can't play it. Throw not in time. Whitehead struggles to get to it. But that'll be a a bunt in the infield. Probably, uh, probably an error, I would think. But yeah, it was going to be a tough play to make anyway. Even if if Whitehead fields it cleanly, she did recover in time to try to throw it to first. It's a really good bunt right between the first baseman and the pitcher, and would have been a bang bang play either way. Yeah, they will rule that an error as Coach Tony Terry wants to speak to his team. Whippets lead at 8-6, to six, but the Bobcats threatening runners on first and second with only one out here in the bottom of the fifth. You know, late night here at the ballpark. So our first pitch was about 8.39. Yeah, I imagine it'll probably be like that tomorrow night too, or tomorrow afternoon, probably run a little late. Yeah. Yeah, they take – here in the state championship, they take their time. They give you plenty of pitches in between innings, you know. In the regular season and playoffs, they kind of speed things up, you know, kind of get the players to, um, you know, give them a few warm-up tosses, but they want to move things along here. They uh, kind of give you plenty of time. I guess, you know, maybe get, get folks their money's worth that come in here. And I think it's, I think it's what, $15 to get into the ball game. So, they're paying a lot of money. You, know, you might not necessarily want to get out of here and – an hour and 10 minutes, but Coach Terry's uh, done with the meeting in the circle with his uh, infield and stepping up to the plate will be the catcher, Brett Lofton. She's got a single on the evening. High first pitch for ball one. Lofton is a junior, no, excuse me, sophomore, 350 batter in the regular season. Uh, uh, the stats online quit updating about playoff time, so we don't really have up-to-date stats. Don't know where that pitch was, but it was called a ball. Yeah, Summerall's uh, Max Preps stats ended up, I think they got game one of the playoffs in, but after that they kind of let it, let it kind of go by the wayside, which is want to happen when, you know, you get busy in the postseason. That one's right down the middle. Whitehead showing some frustration, just coming rearing back and getting the call there. Well, if it's in a bit of a jam, runners on first and second for some wrong. Only one out. Just would love a ground ball or even a Infield fly right here. High for ball three. Three balls and one strike. Go to the count to Lofton. Summer powers the designated player on deck. The ball four chant comes from the Summerall student section, which I imagine is most of their baseball team. Because their baseball team is going to play for the 4A state championship. Then Whitehead comes back and finds the zone for strike two. And if the previous score holds up, it'll be Summerall baseball versus Pontotoc for the state championship as Pontotoc was ahead uh, big in the final inning of play on that one. Don't have a final. Last time I saw it was six to nothing Pontotoc in the seventh. They're taking on West Lauderdale. But, yeah, both Summerall baseball and softball playing for a state title. Can't ever count out West, though. They were down big to Morgul going into the bottom of the seventh, and they came back and won that one. They That's have a habit of doing that. That's true. I said, I, I went to bed that night. I was like, oh, Morville's going to win that one. I'll go to bed. And they come back the next morning, and Wes Lauderdale had made a, a big comeback. So I said, we'll, we'll try to get look online in between innings here and maybe find a score, or maybe that one goes final. But it's a full count to Brent Lofton, the summer all catcher. There's a Whitehead needing it out here with runners on first and second. And that one's popped up. That should be an infield fly. Yeah. Yeah, they called it. Infield fly. Williams ended up making the catch right around where the grass and the dirt meet. But, yeah, that's infield fly. Automatic out. If you're unfamiliar with the rule. Runners on first and second with less than two outs. Infield fly instituted in late 80s, 
Maybe? That sounds right. I'll have to go back and look at my baseball history. I'm not sure when it may have been instituted in softball. As Powers calls for time as she steps in. But a big out there. It's been a tough game for both of these pitchers. They haven't had a lot of strikeouts. They haven't uh, been missing a lot of bats. These batters have been giving them some good ABs and uh, really been making them work. And that, that time the ball is hit out in the outfield. Gracie Williams goes out and hauls it in. With the Bobcats cut into the lead. Two runs on two hits, one error, and two left on base. We'll go to the sixth inning. Kosciuszko leads it by two. Atala County Bank is now open at the corner of Highway 12 and 35. Commercial consumer loans, checking savings online, and mobile banking friendly financial services that truly fit your needs. With local calls and local decisions, it's what we do. Call 662-290-6963. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, now open in Kosciuszko. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Rough, ain't it? If you taught your kids how to change engine oil before you taught them how to ride a bike, then CarQuest Auto Parts is for you. This is Jay Price. If you would never lend a buddy your wobble sockets because, well, he really should have his own, then CarQuest is for you. Come see us at Kosciuszko Auto Parts, where we have over 100 years of counter experience. CarQuest is serious auto parts. Real parts. CarQuest, which is Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Kosciuszko Auto Parts. Rough, ain't it? Boswell Media Sports. Pickles Drug Store presents six innings of Kosciuszko a Whip It Softball. And we are in the top of the sixth inning with the Whippets sending three, four, and five to the plate. Uh, Breck Riley here, Ethan Wood, Whippet football player, baseball player, two time Region 4A Baseball Player of the Year. Region four most valuable quarterback. How many how many awards did you get last night at the banquet? You need a wheelbarrow to get all of them out I of there. Ended up with six. <laughs> I was I was there. They invited me to you know sit in the back, and they ended up giving me a plate and everything. So normally I was going to take pictures, but somebody else was there taking pictures, and we don't need two people taking pictures. So we get those put online for you uh, later. But yeah, athletic banquet last night at the Italian County Coliseum. And uh, Coach Terry, superstitious, he didn't give out any awards. He said, season's not over. Yeah, he uh, had the <laughs> athletic banquet last year after they won state, so <laughs> a little superstitious. Yeah, just a little bit. If you know Coach Terry, you know he uh, is a, a, a creature of habit. And Grace Whitehead uh, swings it as, a, as Smith. This is Smith in now, not Burkhalter. So Smith in, we'll make that note on our – here and we'll have to see if Burke Halter went anywhere. And that time she swings at a high fastball, fouls it off. Um, let's see. I mean, it's hard for us. We are way up here. Did they put Burke Halter at first? And that one's hit in the left field, and it's just foul. Just to the left of the line. Yeah, they did move Burke Halter to first base. So Heron was just the flex player anyway. So she comes out, and Burke Halter is at first. As I said, hard for us to see. Normally we're a little bit closer to the action in softball. As I don't really get a press box to broadcast out of. I'm sitting right down there with the fans, but here they give us the press box. 0-2 pitch. That one's wow. hit deep into left field and in foul territory. Wow. Trailing it down will be Ingram. Another great play right there by the outfield. Well, just that, that foul territory, as I said. it. <laughs> it's a whole lot of it here at the ballpark. No doubt about that. That would have been out in just about any other high school ballpark. Well, yeah. The beauty of spring. I don't want that. Sometimes things have a mind of their own here in the broadcast. It's late. It's past everybody's bedtime, but we appreciate y'all for hanging on with us. And we think this is just a Tuesday. So, I mean, it's a school night. We appreciate everyone that's staying up late listening to the Whippets. It's Campbell Blaine. Looks at ball one. Here on the free broadcast, no cost to the listeners. Some of, some of these broadcasts for the state championship, you might have to pay, uh, do a subscription. Not the case here for us. You got it on your radio dial. And Blaine goes around on that one. Yeah, they appealed down to third. I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was very close. 
She got in a, tried to hold up, but she definitely went around. Blaine today reached base all three times. Uh, walked and scored in the fifth. A singled in the third. Tripled in the first. And that time they pitched her out, and she swung. It comes up empty. Well, like I've been saying, you know, all game. She's really been heating it up in the postseason, you know. Yes, yeah, she has – what's she hitting here? Exactly 500. Well, more than that now that she's got the two hits here. Right? Off the plate for ball, too. Try to get her to chase that one again. But, yeah, she came in uh, batting it at 500. I'm, I'm not great at math, but she's got two hits tonight. <laughs> so, two hits and one walk. So, that average has only gone up. Yeah, she's a really good player, and she's been a staple in the lineup for a lot of years. Two two pitches hit foul. And Blaine is one that, you know, last year she was uh, second in the lineup. It was Kelly Hood, and then you had Blaine. And you thought Blaine might be the leadoff batter this year, but she kind of struggled a little bit earlier in the year, kind of, you know, uh, as is wont to happen with, you know, players. You kind of go through a slump, but, you know, uh, kind of moved her down in the lineup. That's off the plate for ball three. She's been heating up here lately. She's been swinging it really good. Yeah, so they would moved her down in the lineup to, you know, maybe six or seven, and then suddenly the end of the season crept back up, and uh, it's been pretty consistent. That's ball four. Yep. Once again, they they don't want any part of Blaine. They get the two strikes on her, then they start pitching her outside, trying to get her to chase as she's been on base every time she's been to the plate. And... That's you know, Williams had a single and scored back in the fifth inning. Well, you can't pitch around her too much because then you turn around and you get another dandy dozen play. She's gone at second, and she's in in plenty of time. So Blaine with her second stolen base of the game. They called a bunt, and yeah, she left the bat out there for strike one. See, nobody, everybody gets caught up watching the runner. Nobody sees what the umpire calls. That one comes inside for ball one. Yeah, I'm guilty of it. The official scoreboard operator is all guilty of it. One and one to count. Whippets lead it by two, eight to six. They're in the top of the sixth. That one's in the right field. And Shouse comes on. There's a collision with Stringfellow, but Shouse holds on to make the catch. Yeah, probably your outfielder has, you know, the call there. You know, they're the one running in. There's, oh, well, their infielder is running out. But they come, uh, they collide in shallow right field, but Shouse holds on to it, two down in the inning. And Alexandra West coming to the plate. That was a tricky play right there, but Shouse makes another big play. Yeah, she's she is as advertised out there. Got West up at the plate. She's been swinging it really good here lately, so. Hopefully she can keep it rolling. Inside ball one, we told you Shouse is uh, headed to play in Decatur. She'll be playing over in East Central Community College in the fall. Well, West reached on an error. Her last at bat, that was the at bat that probably could have got them out of the inning some roll where they hit it to second base and Stringfellow could have just picked up the ball and tagged Gracie Williams, but she misplayed it. Two runs, heads up running by Campbell Blaine. Two runs came around to score. But she also, uh, she had a double. We're giving her a double to lead off the fourth inning. That pitch high inside, ball three. Yeah, we're not 100% sure whether they give her a double or a single and an error on that play. Uh, in the ball game, three errors by Sumrall, two from Kosciuszko. It's a 3-0 count to... West. And Smith comes back and finds the strike zone there. But yeah, Avery Smith. The freshman in the circle on relief from Burkhalter. That one's hit to Stringfellow at second, and she bobbles it again, and they're going to try to send a run home. Campbell Blaine is in safe. Second at bat in a row. West picks on Stringfellow out there at second, and it'll be another E4. And uh, once again, a heads up running by Blaine. Campbell Blaine scoring from second again on ball hit to the second baseman. Yeah, I mean, it is – it's Blaine. I mean, you know, we talked about how fast she is. She's all out. She's going, you know, and to the middle. Stringfellow is uh, 
kind of filling it out there at second base with a couple of errors. So her teammates are going to come over and kind of talk to her and kind of calm her down a little bit. So yeah, we'll ask you, Ethan, what do you, what do you, if you're going to talk to your fellow teammate that just made a couple of big errors, what are you saying in that kind of situation? Well, you know, as the person who's making the errors, you probably feel like the smallest person in the world right there, you know, letting your team down. But talking to the person who's making the errors, you just got to let them know that, look, next play, you know, focus on the next pitch. Nobody's perfect. You're going to make a mistake. We're going to have your back. Well, you saw that um, Robertson going over there to comfort string fellow. And, you know, you don't get here on accident. You know, you've been putting in work all year. So, I mean, just got to go back to, you know, you can do this. You put in the work. So, just move on to the next pitch. 0-2 uh, count to Coleman. She fouls off the first pitch, swings at the high fastball, comes up empty. That second pitch. And that one just a little bit inside. Ball three. Yeah, this umpire, you, you can't ever tell. He, he, he's one of those, he don't get too excited. He's kind of even keel. So you don't know if he steps back, if he's going to say it's off, or if he's going to ring you up. It's <laughs> difficult to tell. Another foul ball hit. And let's see. Um, booted, bo booted by the Summerall faithful. And they're going to get... <laughs> They're going to get booed by their own fans. A couple of, like I said, the student section over there booing someone who didn't didn't even make a play on the ball. But, you know, not everybody wants to put their body on the line. I mean, it is, it's 1030 at night, right? Now the reflexes might not be working for some people. One, two pitch to Coleman. It's a little slow roller. Bond will play it, and Coleman legs out the infield single. Once again, just putting the ball in play and hustling down the line, making something happen, putting pressure on the defense. Yeah, I'm not sure if that one hit off of Bond's glove. It might have slowed it down a little bit. Robertson made a good play just to get to it and throw it. And we should mention, I don't know if we mentioned it, but Gracie K. Burrell came in. So Burrell, she's standing at second. And you got uh, Coleman at first. Coleman with a couple of singles. And you got Lizzie K. Jones here. Jones, she's got two hits in the ball game. Once again, pitching her inside. Last two at-bats have been doing that. That one comes up high inside. She singled and drove in a run in the fifth. Whippets lead it by three, nine to six. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Inside. Well, that one, some Raw fans wanted to call, but I thought, I did think it was a little, maybe a little in and up. Jones, one of six returning starters for Coach Terry. And she played in the series last year here in Hattiesburg. That was right down the middle for ball. I mean, for strike one. Yeah, let's see what uh, returning starters. You got Jones in right, Blaine in center. Uh, you got Alexandra West, who was a starter in left field, came back to uh, behind the plate. And then you have Dickerson. At shortstop, and then I guess you can consider Price a returning starter. So there's your returning starters for Coach Terry as that pitch is out of the zone for ball three. Three one count to Jones. And speaking of those uh, returning starters, got a lot of young names right there. It's a lot of bright, bright futures. Good couple of years coming up, I hope. Now change up there, Jones way out in front of it. Uh, three two. So the runners will be moving with the three two two outs. So everybody going to be in motion here. Payoff pitch. It's hit into center field. Coming on and making the catch is Robertson. And that will retire the Whippets. But the Whippets are able to get one run on what, one hit. One run, one hit, one error, and two left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Whippets lead it by three. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles. 
but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. You remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611, or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. ACDC blaring out over the speakers here at the University of Southern Mississippi softball complex. And uh, Lady Whippets lead it by three, nine to six. As Summerall will bring up the number nine hitter, then back to the top of the order. London Robertson, the senior center fielder. She's uh, 0 for 2. She laid down a sack bunt back in the uh, fourth inning. And hit a fly ball out to center field back in the second. Six inning for Whippet Softball presented by Pickles Drugstore. And a Grace Whitehead still in the circle for Kosciuszko. That pitch is a fastball inside for ball one. Joined on the broadcast by Ethan Wood. Kosciuszko Whippet. Uh, you won't be a senior much longer. Uh, Friday, the graduating and he's here with uh, a couple of uh, of course uh, your sister plays on the team as that pitch from Whitehead off the plate for ball two but also a couple of a couple of your boys out there in the outfield yes sir yeah they, they got the go Kazi painted on the chest out there and I imagine they're being nice and not rambunctious at all no sir not at all <laughs> and Whitehead comes back and finds the strike zone for strike one no, yeah, Whippets, uh, Whippet football had a spring game last uh, last week. They were able to go up to East Webster and play Baldwin. And Robertson swings and fouls one off. Uh, Whippets got a win there, 26-18 to in a jamboree game, spring jamboree. You play two quarters. You get a lot of, a lot of the guys, you know, get some new guys in and, and all that. But, you know, uh, I was able to watch some of the uh, some of the, the highlights there. We have those highlights online for you. And, of course, uh, Coach Orr in his uh, – this is – will be his third full season. And, you know, it, you can almost throw out the COVID season. But yeah, I'm expecting a big year. You know, they had a really good spring game. And Coach Orr is a really good coach. And I can say from my personal experience, from my two years of him, he's been my favorite coach I've ever had. You know, he's brought me in and treated me like family. And that's just the whole staff. You know, there's – they're really good people and they're really good coaches. And they know how to win football games. Well. And uh, they'll be starting their season in August in Yazoo County as that last pitch from Robertson was fouled off. And that one's caught a ball. must have been a little bit low. It scoots away from West. So count goes full to Robertson. Whitehead doesn't want to walk anybody here with the top of the order looming. And whip it to the three-run lead. They'd love to keep that three-run lead as they get to the seventh. And a high fastballs chopped foul down the line. Let's see. Yeah, we told you I, I, I was mistaken that when I said that Summerall made it to the third round last year, they made it to the second round. They were put out by Newton County. And they avenged that loss this year in round three. And they ended up beating them in two games, 11-2, and two, and – they got a walk-off home run. They beat them in game uh, game three. That one's hit in the left field. Coleman going back, and she'll make the catch at the warning track. Whoa. It looked like it had her kind of twisted up. She made the first step forward. She gets a big hug from Campbell Blaine and McKinley Dickerson. And, yeah, Coleman was all kinds of twisted out there, but it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's an out. Yeah, you play a little left field. Uh, out there, Ethan, what's the ball do off a of, you know, deep flat ball like that? Well, that ball right there looked like it had a little little tail on it, but she did a good job of reacting right there, flipping her hips. And me personally, I wouldn't say I'm the best outfielder ever, but, you know, I can go track a few down. Uh, well, yeah, as I said, it ain't got to look pretty. It's an out, and that's what matters. And Anna that ball hit hard. Anna Grace Shouls comes to the plate. And she's going to pop one up. Mary Kimball Price will make the catch in front of the Summerall dugout in foul territory. Big out right there as Shouse has been uh, just hot as a pistol 
at the at the plate. So it's a foul pop up in foul territory to the third baseman, and Ingram will come up. Ingram's had a couple of hits her last two trips. But yeah, shows is spelled like shows. <laughs> it's hard to you know hard to. Um, Get that through your head when you see it. So I keep saying showers like shower, showers, shower. You don't want to. Yeah, she swung at that. And that's. Well, Shouse had a really good night tonight. Been our kryptonite. They say she didn't swing. Anyway, looked like she swung. But Shouse, it looks like shows, but I was talking. To, apparently that's a, that's a name down here in South Mississippi. So most people from South Mississippi see it and they know it's called Shouse. It'd be kind of like uh, Jordan in Kosciuszko, right? Most people say it, call it Jordan. In Kosciuszko, you know it's Jordan. So some something similar to that. Coach Terry wants to walk out and speak to the hump, playing umpire. I thought she hit the ball. I thought she check swung and the ball hit off, but they're going to say she didn't swing and it just bounced off of West Glove. That one's definitely foul. No doubt about it. She fouled it off into the netting. Whippets with a three-run lead. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. And if you look to the seventh inning, the Whippets will send nine to the plate, number nine in the order, and then back to the top of the order. Let's see the Whippets will have coming up in the seventh. Oh, Shaley Ingram, uh, center fielder. No, left fielder for Summerall. Fouls another one off. That's a long foul ball down towards the right field line. The dimensions here at the ballpark, 200 down the corners and 220 in center field. A little bit longer than Kosciuszko. Kosciuszko goes about 216 in center field. But this is also a normal size fence all the way around. The pitch got away from Whitehead. They'll even the count at two and two. Yeah, this is a pretty packed house. I don't see much room for anybody else to stand Anywhere, there's another foul ball, but you expect the the packed crowd when you're just 20 minutes down the road. Tomorrow's game, uh, tomorrow's uh, three, uh, four o'clock game, probably be pretty packed as Hernando is going to be taking on Pedal. And if you know Pedal, it's a, it's a stone's throw from the stadium here. I mean, it's just right there. So I imagine there'll be a lot of folks here for that 6A game tomorrow. 2-2 two -two pitch. It's chopped foul down the third base line. But yeah, tomorrow you'll have 2A, 4A, and 6A. That'll be Lake and Pisgah, 2A. And then you'll have this game, the you know, second game of the day, and then the 6A game, Hernando and Petal, and then the 5A game, Neshoba Central and East Central. A whole lot of softball being played here in two days. High count goes full. Been a good at-bat here by Ingram. Foul a couple off. And Been a lot of good at-bats, both teams tonight, really. I mean, they've had to work to get these outs. Yeah, I mean, you look at the across the board here, 11 hits for Kosciuszko, 10 for the uh, the home team, Summerall. Well, that's exactly why these two teams are here right now is because they don't strike out, they put the ball in play, and they do the little things right. A called strike three. Be the first serve pro strikeout of the ball game for Whitehead. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll go to the seventh inning. Kosciuszko with a three-run lead. From the classroom to the athletic playing field. Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. The SIP and Kosciuszko would like to wish Campbell Blaine and all the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets good luck as they play for the state championship. Whether you're heading out to a game, on your morning commute, or just need a little something to quench your thirst, stop by the SIP in Kosciuszko. Try out our great selection of coffee or grab a fresh fruit smoothie or frappe. We also have great food items for breakfast and lunch. The Sip and Kosciuszko. Go Whippets. Boswell Media Sports. Final inning of play here from 
the Southern Miss Softball Complex. Whippets with a three-run lead. And Anna Grace Mansell stepping in, and she swings and hits one foul down the first baseline. First pitch swinging once again. Yep, first pitch swinging. Mansell, we said, very, very aggressive at the plate. She was honored before the game with the Scholar Athlete Award. They give those to each, uh, each team. I believe it's the MHSA. They probably have a, a corporate sponsor for it, but I didn't hear it. But MHSAA is the one that gives it out. She was honored with that before the game. There's another pitch swung on and fouled off behind the plate for strike two. Seven things for women's softball. Presented by Central Electric Power Association. Hang around for the Wendy's post game. We'll name our Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game. And we kind of make that a, a, a quick post game because it's late. Everybody wants to go to bed. Everybody wants to get home. They probably cut the lights off on us. So we'll get a quick win of these post game wrap up and we'll get back to the hotel. There's a one ducking down his coach Terry has to duck under it down the line at third base, but three pitches and three swings from Mansell. Listen, she's kind of earned that designated player spot. The whip, it's kind of, you know, they changed it up a little bit in the postseason. They had Allie Moore, Gracie Cade Burrell, and then Mansell kind of, kind of, ex, you know, uh, extended herself, kind of got in the front of the pack there. And that one's low inside, ball one. Yeah, they were switching it out sort of between the season between her and a few other players, and she's really stepped up and done a really good job in the lineup. Well, she, um, I said she's a, a senior, one of, well, I said five seniors on the ball club, but you got uh, Meredith Dean, Jones, Macy Coleman. Mansell, is that five? That sounds like five. <laughs> Meredith Dean. Yeah, Meredith Dean. And there's a strikeout for Smith. One down in the inning. We'll go back to the top of the order. So that'll be McKinley Dickerson. Dickerson is three for, no, two for three. Couple of singles. Hit by pitch. Couple of runs scored. She came in leading the team in runs scored. I think it was I think it had her 45. But, you know, when you're the leadoff batter. And that one's hit. Showles is going to step, right step back and haul it in. But, yeah, just like that, two outs in the inning and Mary Kimball Price stepping up. That's a tough ball to field right there for the right fielder. That ball's tailing away from you, and, you know, she's got to catch it behind her. And tough angle, and she's a, once again made a really great play. But, yeah, we talked to you about uh, – Dickerson being the leader in the run score, but when you got Price and Whitehead. Right behind you, it does a lot for you. <laughs> hitting behind you, you're going to pop up. a testament up. to them, but also a testament to her. She's done a really good job getting on base and doing what a leadoff does. Well, that'll do it for the Whippets in the seventh inning as the, that pop-up is hauled in by Robertson at shortstop. We'll go to the final half inning of play. Whippets lead it by three. We're back in 60 seconds on Boswell Media Sports. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickles Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Did you know there's a place where you can get good neighborhood service and surprisingly great rates on home and auto insurance? Yep, and that place is... Ta-da! State Farm on Highway 2. Here's the deal. Angel Alvin McDonald's State Farm team is your go-to in Atala County for the service you deserve at the price you want. So stop shopping around. The team at Angel Alvin McDonald's office on Highway 12 has you covered. Call 662-289-3161 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. Inner Sandman by Metallica playing out across the field here at Southern Miss Softball Complex. I mentioned this while I was in the uh, uh, over there with most of the guys. I said, one thing I do love about coming to Hattiesburg, the music selection is always great here from the DJ. As a DJ myself, I appreciate the music selection. Whippets lead it by three, bottom of the seventh inning. Three, four, and five do up in the order. Ella Roberts in the shortstop looks at ball one from Whitehead. 
Robertson one for three today. Fastball for strike one there. Yeah, uh, Robertson singled and scored in the fifth and grounded out to shortstop a couple of times in the game. McRiley, Ethan Wood still hanging out with us, been with us since the third inning. High ball, too. Yeah, they kind of got us on the air quickly here as the Neshoba Central broadcast crew uh, got out, and I had to come in here and throw my stuff together. By the time I get everything put up, they're having the meeting at home plate. So I just had to hit the button, and here we go. High ball three. Yeah, I had to hit the button and just hit the ground running. So I got cords everywhere. It feels like Hoth in here in the broadcast booth. I got the air turned down to about 47 degrees. 3-1 pitch. That's it in the right field. Jones, she'll come on and make the catch about the foul line, and that's out number one. Great play by Jones right there. Bond stepping in. Brandy Bond. She's 0 for today, but she does have a RBI. She drove in a run back in the fifth, and a little fielder's choice up the middle to McKinley Dickerson. Bond is the third baseman. Probably see her in the circle tomorrow. She looks at strike one from Whitehead. You know, probably see Bond in the regular season. She was 11 and 1 with a 1.16 ERA. So Bond is a uh, She's got some stuff. I expect to see her tomorrow. Swinging strike two. Got out in front of the changeup. Fouls it off. Seventh innings for Whippet Softball presented by Central Electric Power Association. 0 2 pitch is hit to Williams at second. Goes down to one knee, catches it, and overthrows it at first. And they'll be able to go to second base. I think Williams just rushed herself a little bit there. Yeah, the ball went into the dugout, so that's why Bond's able to go to second. Well, once again, had two strikes on her and just put the ball in play. And, you know, yeah, you've want been to... talking about it all game. You know, you couldn't do that, put pressure on the defense, and good things but will happen. You didn't want this batter coming to the plate with a runner on. That's Burkhalter, who's three for three. And Whitehead goes right after her with the fastball. Strike one. You know, Burkhalter, three singles. Singled in the fifth and drove in a run. Singled and scored in the second. Good pitch. Yeah, all-speed pitch there on the outside corner. Some are all fans don't like it, but it's been pretty consistent most of the night. That's been a strike. You know, maybe he's been given the corner all night for sure. Yeah, there's um, maybe on occasion you don't get that pitch, but 0 2 count to Burkhalter and tries to set her up outside again. Burkhalter not chasing it. Yeah, the way she's swinging it right now, don't want to give her anything to hit 0 2. Nope. Whoop, it's lead it by three, bottom of the seventh inning. Whitehead still in the circle, trying to get a game one win. And that one's hit in front of Macy Coleman. She stops it this time, and it'll be runners on the corners with one out. But a good play there by Coleman to keep it in front of her. Yeah, and that ball was hit hard. They've done a great job all night just putting the ball in play with two strikes. Another two-strike hit. I mean, they've, they've been hard outs for sure. Yeah, runners on the corners and Stringfellow stepping in. Stringfellow singled in the second. Reached on an error in the fifth. That was where they kind of, she laid down a bunt, sack bunt, and uh, Whitehead misplayed it in the, you know, just in front of the mound. And thus she reached on that error. Stringfellow, the second baseman. She might be thinking about a measure of redemption here. She's had a couple of errors in the field. High ball one. Told you it's never easy. You know, Whippets. A three-run cushion. You got to get through the heart of the order to try to close it out here. That's right down the middle for strike one. Runners on the corners. Surprised that Burkhalter is still standing at first. 
I see a hit and run right here somewhere. And that one's foul for strike two. Yeah, they didn't have the, I thought they might have the hit and run, but Burkhalter wasn't moving. I don't know if Burkhalter, oh, if she doesn't move fast. I mean, I haven't really seen her. She's played. Yeah, it's a surprise move. You definitely would want to get out of a double play ball right here, but you know, you never know what the guy on the third base line is thinking, you know. Um, that one's hit foul. Whippet's going to give chase and mm, gets out of play. But, yeah, Burkhalter, we, we've only seen her in the circle and at first base. Not two places you really can't show off much speed, so we're not, not sure what kind of legs she has. So we don't have stats available for stolen bases or anything. We do know that they are pretty aggressive at the plate. They like to bunt a lot when I – Talk to Coach Terry, you know, getting some scouting reports on one-two pitch. It's a good Ooh. pitch right there. Yeah, I'm not sure where that one was. Maybe a little bit low. Not a bad place to miss if you're whitehead. You know, maybe get that inside corner call. Kind of leaving up. Two balls, two strikes to Stringfellow. Not a good pitch. Yeah, that one was a little, little elevated. A little elevated there. Count will go full. I think Whippet fans wanted to call, but yeah, I think that one that was probably a little up, a little high. Once again, you know, those calls have been mostly consistent. Three two pitch is hit to Williams. She'll go to first for one. The run will come home. Two outs now. Nine to seven, and the tying run comes to the plate. Let's see. So what is it? Four three on the put out. Brett Lofton. Lofton's the catcher. She does have a hit today. She had a single in the second. Her last at bat, she popped into the infield fly. Burkhalter moves to second. Good pitch. Yeah, first pitch inside corner. Cold strike one. Whitehead throws so hard and she throws so many fastballs. You know, you're going to go in there sitting fastball, and then she goes in there and drops a changeup on you. She's really hard to hit. It's hard thinking change up right out, right out of the gate. Can't do that with Whitehead. She throws too hard. You think change up, before you know it, your blanket's going to be in the mitt. Yeah. Oh, one pitch. And that one's a cold strike, too. That time she just maybe worked a little bit of the corner outside, but that's an 0-2 count to Lofton. Whippet fans get on their feet. They're cheering and clapping and Hoping to try to get a game one win. Go up 1-0 in this 4A state championship series. And Lofton swings and stays alive at the plate. Weapons lead at 9-7. 0-2 count to Lofton. O2 pitch. And another foul ball. Often staying alive. She did this her last at bat. She had a, a lot of foul balls and worked the count full and then popped up into that infield fly scenario. Yeah, both teams have done a good job battling with two strikes all night. No outs have been given tonight for sure. You had to earn every one. Another O2 pitch coming. And Lofton gets just a little piece of it to stay alive. Lofton really battling at the plate. Yeah, once again, Whitehead kind of pushed her outside. And Lofton had to reach for it. Probably would have been ball. I don't think it was a little out of the zone. Let's see if, let's see if Whitehead comes back with that inside change up here. Now it's hit in the right field. And it's going to drift, 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 foul. Jones, Williams, and Rutherford all gave chase over there, but it did indeed. For a moment there, I thought someone might be able to play it. As we have, you know, said on the broadcast many times tonight, a whole bunch of foul territory. You can set up shop out there and right in the foul territory here at the ballpark. 0-2 pitch is hitting the right field, and it's foul. Again, that one was closer. That's a line drive in the right field, and it hit just about three feet to the right of the line. 
West will hand the bat to Lofton as she comes back to the plate. So I think Whitehead wants a different ball as we're still in an 0-2 count. Just a great at bat here from the catcher Lofton. Boy, how hard is it to get that last out? It's been tough tonight. It's been a really good at bat. She didn't even have a ball on her yet. 0-2 pitch, and there it is. She almost went around, but Whitehead... Whitehead, maybe just maybe an intentional pitch right there high in the zone to get keep Lofton from swinging, maybe get her out of her rhythm there. Well, when you battle and battle and battle like she's been doing, sometimes you sort of get in the habit of just swinging, you know, and maybe she's trying to get her chase right there at some high. One-two pitch. Not a bad pitch right there. Yeah, that one wasn't bad. It was a little, little low off the plate, and kind of leave it up at 2-2. Two -two. Got to come out of here. Can't have too many runners on base at this point in the game. Well, like I said, this is – she represents the tying run. Both teams are doing a really good job tonight of making the scoreboard look like a picket fence. Doing a really good job. Not a lot of zeros up on that board. No. Well, some crooked numbers. 2-2 Two -two pitch. And I don't know where that pitch was, but it's called a ball. I think he's uh, – I think he's afraid to ring her up. <laughs> I mean, in hostile territory for sure. A lot of summer all fans here. Great at bat by Lofton. She's worked the count full again. Three-two pitch. It's hit to Whitehead up the middle. She throws to first in time for the out, and the Whippets will get the game one win, nine to seven. So we'll step aside for a few minutes and. We'll tally some scores when we come back. We'll get into our Wendy's post game. Whippets win at 9 to 7. Back after these messages on Boswell Media Sports. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. Central Tire Service, across from Louvelle on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. The Sip and Kosciuszko would like to wish Campbell Blaine and all the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets good luck as they play for the state championship. Whether you're heading out to a game, on your morning commute, or just need a little something to quench your thirst, stop by the Sip in Kosciuszko. Try out our great selection of coffee or grab a fresh fruit smoothie or frappe. We also have great food items for breakfast and lunch. The Sip and Kosciuszko. Go Whippets! Boswell Media Sports. And the Kosciuszko Lady Whippets get a win in game one of the 4A state championship. They win it 9-7 to seven over the Summerall Lady Bobcats. And it was a barn burner. Everything we expected when these two teams get together, there's a reason that uh, these teams are both here. This is actually one of the closer games on the afternoon. But we'll take a look quickly as we, you know, we got a, a lot to clean up. And... 
will get on the road as she, imagine anybody else wants to get on home. And you're listening to the Wendy's uh, post game show. And Kosciuszko uh, got on the board early. Kenley Dickerson got hit by a pitch. And then a triple from Campbell Blaine drove her in in the first inning. And in the first inning, the Summerall Lady Bobcats went down in order. We go back to the second inning. Kosciuszko goes down in order. As we get to the second inning, that's where Summerall ties the ball game. Ashlyn Burkhalter gets on with a single, comes around to score on a single from Brett Lofton. Go to the third inning, and leading off the inning with a single was McKinley Dickerson. Ends up coming around to score on a ground out by Whitehead. That makes it 2-1. to one. And then is when the, the third inning is when Summerall went to work. They led off with a single and a double from Ingram. And then another hit from Burkhalter, and they get a two runs and take a 3-2 to two lead. Uh, Whippets don't get anything in the fourth. And then coming back in the fourth for the Summerall Lady Bobcats, a walk comes back to bite the Whippets, and they take a 4-2 to two lead. But then the Whippets get a big fifth inning where they sent 11 batters to the plate. Started off with Dickerson, a pop fly out to right field, and then Mary Kimball Price, Doubles to second. And then there was a pop-up out for Whitehead. So with two outs, the Whippets get the rally going. Campbell Blaine walks. Gracie Williams gets a single. Alexandra West hits in an error uh, and a smart base running by Blaine. The Whippets plate two runs. Another hit by Macy Coleman brings in a run. Another hit by Jones brings in a run. An error brings in a run from Anna Grace Mansell and her hit. And then McKinley Dickerson gets a, a single and then a strikeout into the inning. So the Whippets ended that one 8-4 to four was the score. After that, in the fifth inning, the Bobcats got a couple of runs on the board to make it 8-6. to six, And Whippets were able to get one more run in the seventh inning as, or excuse me, the sixth inning as Alexandra West once again hits into an error and Campbell Blaine scores from second base. And after that, in the Home half of the seventh inning, an error also uh, leads to a run for the Bobcats, but it's not enough, and the Whippets win it 9-7. to seven. And that's your final score. We'll take a look at some stats. Thanks to USM. Anna Grace Whitehead gets the win. She goes seven innings pitch, gives up 11 hits, seven runs, five earned runs, walked one, struck out one, faced 34 batters. The losing pitcher will be Ashlyn Burkhalter, four and two-thirds innings. Uh, eight hits, seven runs. Here's the kicker. Just two of them earned runs. Uh, that's killer when you're uh, a pitcher. Walked one, struck out one, faced 25 batters. Uh, also coming in and getting some in the circle was Avery Smith. She goes two and a third. Gives up three hits, two runs, no earned runs. And walks one, strikes out two. So that's what it looks like there as we look at Offensive leaders for Kosciuszko. McKinley Dickerson goes two for four with an RBI. Campbell Blaine two for two with a triple and an RBI. Macy Coleman two for four. RBI. Uh, Lizzie Kate Jones two for four with an RBI. Mary Kimball Price one for five with a double. Alexandra West one for four with a double. Uh, Ethan Wood still hanging out with us here on the Wendy's Post game. And uh, Ethan, uh, you know, it was, I'm not going to say it wasn't pretty, but it wasn't easy. But any games this time of year never are. So if you're a whip it, you know, on the team, what are you taking away from that win? Yeah, I thought one through nine, all through the lineup, you know, everybody in the field, I thought everybody had a good game and, you know, really just left it all out on the field. And, you know, both teams really left it all out on the field. You know, not a lot of strikeouts, a lot of two-strike hits. You know, it was a really good game. And, you know, it's going to be a battle tomorrow. Yep. And uh, now it's time to name our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. Paul Gundy of Autumn Ridge Dental. And we salute the Kosciuszko Whippet player of the game. And now that's something to smile about. Yeah, Ethan, we uh, talked to here, you know, we just talked about the offensive leaders. You had Dickerson having a big game, Jones with a big game. Uh, West has a good game behind the plate. And, uh, you know, has she did. Had two out knocks. Yeah, I mean, they're errors, but she put the ball in play. So, I mean, she did what she was supposed to do. But I think you and I both agree that tonight's player of the game go to Campbell Blaine. And Blaine uh, just, you know, she plays a great center field. She got the triple in the uh, first inning. And then a single in the third, but what you and I were kind of impressed by, heads up base running. Yes, sir, no doubt about that. I mean, she got on all four times. That's all you can ask out of her. 
you know, made stuff happen that you didn't think was going to happen. You know, she was running on the bases, you know, making stuff happen and putting pressure on the defense and scored on errors twice from second base. Yeah, she was standing on second. The ball was hit to second and booted both times, and she scores both times. That tells you how fast, you Campbell, that a lot. You know, how fast Campbell Blaine is. So she goes technically one for two tonight with a single and a triple and reaches base twice on two walks and uh, scores two runs. So, Campbell Blaine, your Autumn Original player of the game, Autumn Original, now that's something to smile about. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. I want to say thank you to Donald back in the studio, and thank you uh, to everyone involved in Boswell Media Sports for uh, our broadcast. We'll be back with you tomorrow afternoon around 3 o'clock. So, for Ethan Wood, Breck Riley signing off. Say